to order. Uh, I think we have a quorum. Um, so pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, General Law 30A, Section 20, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation a number of people that may gather in one place, the meeting of the City of Westfield Conservation Commission would be conducted via remote participation. Specific information can be found on the City of Westfield website at www.cityofwestfield.org. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen to the meeting may do so by turning into channel 15 or channel 12 or online at westfieldtv.org or online at youtube.com slash Westfield community programming channel. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the city's website an audio recording, transcript, or other comprehensive recording of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Uh, for those in attendance from the public, Again, our, our normal procedure is that the again, commission will listen to um, applicants. Uh, the commission will then dis discuss the, uh, the motion or the application before us. Um, and then we will open the meeting for public co uh, comments at that time uh, before we either close the session or we continue it. So with that in mind, uh, roll call. Carl. Yes. Okay, Tom. I'm here. Alex. Here. Jim. Yes, I'm here. Cliff. Yes. Okay, I uh, don't see Bob. I'm here. Oh, where, where are you? <laughs> Bob isn't here. He isn't here. Okay. Bob can't right, make it this evening. All right, thank you. So, um, does anyone have any item for the commission not on the agenda? Seeing none, uh, public hearings. Uh, AS 459 Russell Road to Coa Country Club. Uh, do we have a, uh, an applicant or are they requesting continuance? Um, there, I heard from them, they're requesting a continuance. Please. Okay, so we have a motion, please. I'll make a motion that we continue. I'll second that motion. All right, to May 25th at 6.30 p.m. To May 26, 6.30 p.m. Uh, 25th. 25th, 6.30 All right. p.m. All right, thank you. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none. <clears throat> Carl? Yes. Tom? Yes. Alex? Yes. Jim? Yes. And Cliff? Yes. All right, thank you. Item four, public meetings. Uh, 975 North Road. Continue from April 13th. Um, Tim. How are you today, sir? Good evening. All right, you want to again refresh the commission on your project? Sir, so um, <laughs> what we're looking to do is uh, um, take the fence down on the property um, and, and remove a couple of uh, uh, trees um, uh, that are on the, uh, on, on the property. Meredith, do you have a map that you can share for a site plan or something we could look at? Yes, uh, Peter, can you let me share, please? All set. Thank you. Good let evening, me. Tim. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Uh, Good evening to everyone. <laughs> uh, okay. Can you guys see the plan? Not yet. Well, there we go. It's so legible. Yes. Could you maximize it, please? Yep. <clears throat> okay. So we did do another site visit. I, who was there? Uh, David and Tom were mm -hmm. able to come. Um, so let me orient folks. This is 202 out here, existing driveway, existing building. Um, they had Levesque put together a nice plan here. They flagged the wetlands, showed the 50 foot buffer here, 100 foot buffer is out here. 
um, the existing chain link fence goes um, basically the perimeter of the, the existing gravel lot there. Um, they are asked, they agree, they were agreeing to kind of establish a natural vegetated area, I believe up to the 50 or was it 40 foot buffer zone, um, Tim? So it was, uh, I think it, 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 because the fence is kind of between the 50 and 100 foot buffer zone. So uh, I, I believe that what we had agreed to add, add additional uh, it bleeds a little bit into from 50 to 100. Take some, take the gravel driveway out and let uh, that's in front of the building that's in the 100 foot area. And then some of it's in the 50 foot. So we're going to remove the gravel. And then um, once we pull the fence down, we're going to add a, a additional buffer zone. So we're going to, we're going to let some of the natural plants grow into that area to kind of bring the property back to not looking so commercial, especially in the front there. Um, and on the side of the building where Meredith's hand is, uh, computer hand is right now. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's one of the reasons for us to take the fence down. So um, the trees that we're looking to take down, one of them is is dead a couple of them are dead and uh very dangerous to the building <clears throat> uh, a couple of the trees that we're taking out is is really right on the line of the 100 buffer zone it, it one of them is in the 100 foot buffer zone and one of them is not but it abuts it it's close to that and then in the front of the building closer to 202 what we're looking to do is um just take out a couple trees that are in the hundred foot buffer zone, but we're leaving I think most we of the refer to them as hazard trees. I'm sorry, say that again. No, that? excuse me. We're not Tim, uh, you're not allowed to speak during this part of this. This isn't your hearing. Okay. Tim, go ahead, Tim. The applicant. I can yes. So um the what we're looking to do is um from the gravel road um we're going to clear some of the brush out that's outside of the 100 foot zone and then there is a couple trees that are um in the uh, uh 100 foot zone that we're gonna we would ask to take down they are they're dead so uh i think it would be once we remove those it's a little bit probably healthier for the rest of the trees and remove the fence. So remove the gravel, remove the fence, <coughs> and uh, not looking to do anything uh, major. I, I, I think that what we're looking to do is we bought the building because we love the location and the pond and the beauty of all the vegetation around it. And that's what we want to keep. That's why we want to take the fence down and take the gravel driveway out. We like the environment that the building lives in, and we want to promote that. Uh, we're not, again, we're not looking to make it look like the plaza next door. That's why we're moving out of there. All right, thank you. Uh, Meredith, you had some pictures that you took when we were on the site visit? <laughs> yeah, let me grab those. Um, let's see. Can you see that photo? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's the side of the existing building. Um, they are asking to, I think, cut one of these oaks and then yep. limb. Was that right? This yep. one? Yes. Yep, we're going to, yep. And then that limb one. the other, and limb, limb one the branch. Other. Right. Yeah. Because it's hanging over and they're going to be remodeling this building and it's going to have a, would you say a steeple or it's going to have a higher? Well, um, it's going to have a gabled, it's going to have a gabled gable. roof. So we're, yeah. We're, we're taking that soffit off and putting a traditional pitch gable roof on there. Oops. What do you guys, are you guys seeing? Oh, we lost it. Sugar. Hold on. Um, hold on. I have more. Let's see if I can do this. Ah. 
Sure, scan. One of the other things I, I forgot to add is we're actually going to move the septic system off. Its septic system is towards the pond right now. The, and we're going to move that to the front of the building. Yeah, so let me orient people. So this existing gravel drive, and this is the existing chain link fence. I think they're asking, to, there's a one dead pine to over here where my arrow is. And then there was, oh, a dead maple over here. And it's a little further. In the oh, large, oh, that, yeah. Then the large one to the left, whoops. Oh yeah, yeah. this one is, um, it's full of holes. Um, so, and oddly there's some power lines over here that go to there are a bunch of houses in the back. So I'll, I'll show you some more, but if any of those trees go, it's gonna take out some power lines. Um, this is in the front, 202 is out here. Again, the fence, and this is where they're asking to do some minor brush clearing, but leaving leaving the stumps, leaving the leaves, um, just cutting material. And this is in the outer 100 foot buffer zone. Um, let me get through. Yes, this one is a dead pine because it's basically getting shaded out by the other ones. It's another view of that. They did a perk test. This is in the outer 50 to 100. So they would be disengaging the existing septic and putting in a new one. Um, or the same, this is the oak that they would like to cut down because it's, and that one may be, a, may be outside of the buffer zone, not sure. But I think you're gonna be cutting, not stumping, right? That's correct, right. yeah. So I think that's, I think that covers things. Like, can, whoops, go back to the previous, keep. This one? Th this one there. Uh, for what our discussion out there was, they were, they were gonna um, leave after they re remove the gravel, they were gonna do a no mow zone from 40 feet from where the fence is now towards us. And that would re revert back to its natural habitat. That's right. And there was a lot of nice, actually, blueberries kind of entangled with the fence that high bush blueberries that would be nice to try to leave. <laughs> fence gets removed. I know it's I'm not sure if that's possible, but. Um, no, I, I think that we can save for sure. We're going to try to save it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah there are nice blueberry bushes there. Yeah. All right. We're going to put. Uh, we're going to put Go ahead. Existing, we we want to put uh, uh, plants in that area that are consistent with the habitat that's there now. So we're, we're going to let that naturally grow back. All right. Thank you. We <laughs> um, any questions from the commission? Uh, yeah, no, I just dropped your call. Uh, I can actually hear what you guys are saying now. I was having a volume issue. I think that's a great idea with the natural regrowth. Uh, right. It's again, as I mentioned previously, the commission will you know, we discuss with the applicant, and then we will allow the, the public to participate after that. But thank you. Uh, anyone from the commission like to have any questions of this particular application? I'll speak in favor of it. I like with David and Meredith, I joined the site visit last week. Uh, I, I also stopped there the week before and, and all the trees had white tape on them. And that I, I went ballistic. I said, um, so I, I was real pleased to meet Tim. I, I do think he and his company are going to do the right thing environmentally. And uh, that my only concern is when we get to it is, is that we properly identify these trees. There seems to be, I, I want to remember three, Tim. Is that correct? Three trees You're that correct. Be taken down. You've got five yeah. X's on your on your map that we on your site map that we looked at earlier. So I didn't know what that was about, but um, we'll have I to somehow clarify that in the order of conditions. Well, Tom, sure. we put extra tape around those trees 
when we were out there on the site visit. Yes, I realized that. Yep. So yes. we know exactly yep. which ones would come out. Okay. All right. Any other comments from the commission? Ashley, David, no, I, I don't understand what you just said. Well, there, you just asked him to remark the trees. No, no, there, we we did that when we were on the site visit. You double we double taped them, right? Yeah, and we we took uh, pictures of those. Me and Meredith had, Meredith had taped those with yes. a different color tape. Oh, good. Well, um, then that. And right, with the yellow tape, to... and, yeah. and then took the pictures uh, of those uh, um, to make sure that we weren't uh, nobody made any mistakes. <laughs> right. Yeah. So thank you, David. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments? <laughs> I mean, it's really be, be a nice improvement to the site, um, especially removing you know moving that septic tank farther away from the edge of the pond. If there are no more questions from the commission, any questions or comments from the audience concerning this particular project? I think it sounds good. Okay, thank you. All right, seeing none, I'd like to uh, obtain a motion to close the public meeting. So I'll make moved. a motion. Oh. What was that, Cliff? Yeah, it's fine, yeah. Okay. I'll second, second Cliff's motion. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none. No, I right. like a further discussion. Oh, oh. Oh, close the. No, we are, no. They they Boy, voted to close stopped. the hearing, Chris. You had your chance for discussion already. He All did. right, thank Jim. you. Yep. Okay, Carl. Yes. Jim. Yes. Tom. I'll vote yes. Alex. Yes. Cliff. Yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. I need a motion on the recommendation. I'll make a recommendation that we approve with the negative three determination uh, with the following conditions that the conservation coordinator approve the erosion controls prior to the commencement of work, <laughs> that the erosion controls shall be maintained in good condition until the conservation commission coordinator approves their removal, that any disturbed soils be loam seeded and revegetated prior to the removal of the erosion controls, that trees may be removed at the commission's uh, discretion. Well, that the tag trees can be uh, removed in, co in uh, coordination with the coordinator. Um, that the trees, uh, sorry, after the uh, fence and the gravel are removed, that there's a uh, no mow zone that's at least 50 feet uh, from the water's edge. And um, that that be maintained in perpetuity and that uh, as much as possible native shred native shrubs shall be planted in the uh, zone per the com uh, the uh, coordinator's approval. Hey, Carl, I can I get you just to add that the trees are going to be cut and the stumps left in place and also add that it, it'll be there are three tag trees that'll be removed. I'll accept that as uh, yeah, as friendly amendment. I'll make the second to that motion. Mm -hmm. okay, any discussion? I, I do have something to, for clarification. Mm -hmm. um, my impression was the mo no mo zone was 40 feet from where the fence is now. Well, that's more than 50 feet from the edge of the wet of the pond. I think it's in the 50 foot zone, the way that it curves in that area on that, uh, Meredith has that. On the plan. Um, plan. Okay, so. So you're good with it. I'm Sorry. good with it then. Okay, thank you. 50 feet. We're gonna keep okay. it at 50 feet because that I think that is it the cur same it curves in there. 40 Plus, feet from the fence. All right, thank Plus you. We have to, I have and if I understand. If I understand correctly, that's where Tim plans to do the shrub plantings and uh, the native plantings. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any additional discussion? Um, seeing none. Carl. 
I always have something to say. Excuse me, but it's just the commission participating at the moment, please. All right, Carl? Yes. Jim? Yes. Tom? I'll vote yes. Alex? Yes. Cliff? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, item B, 27 Angelica Drive, continued from April 27th. Okay. Uh, do we have an applicant? Uh, Marissa? Yeah, we're yes. here. There, okay. Uh, why don't you bring the commission up, up to date? Uh, so we had a site visit on Friday. Uh, Meredith and Mr. Doe came out and took a look at the trees uh, in question. And uh, Meredith actually ran a tape measure from the edge of the brook out. Um, and it actually looks like probably 10 to 15 feet um, into the woods still <laughs> is not actually part of that protected area. So some of the trees may actually not be um, in question, but there are some there that still are. Um, Meredith, did you have anything else to add to that, I guess? Um, yeah, you know, I was, we did the measurements. It was hard to measure. Um, it would be better if a surveyor or somebody who had the data in a GPS could actually locate the 200 foot zone. I mean, our tape was, it wasn't perfectly straight, but it was relatively straight. It just, it was confusing because of where the silt fence is and there's an existing sign up, like the person who developed the property um, didn't, I don't know if they located the signs in the correct place, but overall, you know, there's a lot of trees. It's questionable where exactly the resources are. We did see BVW and then there's the hundred foot buffer zone off of that. And the stream, the perennial stream is there and that gives us the 200 foot riverfront area. And so, yes, yeah, some trees may be outside of that zone and some are definitely in that zone. Um, I guess I can show the commission some pictures and I guess my general take on it is, you know, I'm not a forester. I, I don't know what, I mean, I can tell if a tree's dead, but other than that, I don't know how to differentiate like what trees are good to cut and not good. And um, I, th I think some of the trees were healthy that are being asked to, to be cut and and then there's some that are clearly dead and could be um, cut, but not stumped. So I'm not sure given, I mean, I'm a wetland scientist, not a forester. So let's look at the pictures and then the commission can ask some more questions if you guys want. Sure, go ahead. Um, the applicant sent some really nice photos and a PDF that I can share. Where did I go? Okay. And I can show the one, pictures I took too. Um, so just to refresh you guys, this was a local ordinance only notice of intent. Um, and they, the reason it was that is because they stayed outside of the 200 foot riverfront area when they did this subdivision. I think it was at least maybe three or four years ago. It's not very old. Um, so these are these folks home, their little lawn, and then basically a pine forest that is consists of some quite quite tall trees so um let me see if I can show you yeah I mean these are just you know they're not doing great but that's kind of the nature of pines when they're all clumped together like that you could see the silt fence is still there from when they did the development um and yes some trees are dead over here. This one seems to be fine. So I'm not, I just, I'm not sure how to say yes or no. And I'm not really comfortable saying, yeah, just cut all of them. Um, Did you show your pictures too? Yeah, I can. Yep. Okay. So, thanks. Uh, let's see. There's multiple. There's a lot of steps when I have to, hold on. Here we go, okay. Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay. Um, 
Again, I think they were all white pines that were being requested and most were in the outer 100, uh, 200 foot riverfront area to a perennial stream and some are, some are dead, certainly. Um, and some are doing well. I mean, <coughs> white pines don't look very healthy. That's just the nature of how they grow. They don't have lower branches. They only have needles at the top of their trunks. So, yeah, and what's odd is the neighbor has a bunch of signs kind of at their edge of their lawn, but these folks only had one sign. Let me see, I think I took a picture of it. Here it is. So they did have a sign and that was part of the notice of intent. Um, again, their house relative to the edge of the woodlot. And there's a fair amount of understory. Uh, there is quite a few invasives, bittersweet, garlic mustard, honeysuckle. So I don't know. Do people have questions? Uh, questions from the commission. I guess a, a bit of a question to Meredith. It, it almost sounds as if getting some advice from a forester uh, certainly would help us with this. Is it, am I reading that correctly? I mean, that was sort of my thought because I, I just don't know. I just don't know enough about forest management to make good recommendations and decisions. Um, I can certainly make an educated guess on what trees are dead and can be taken down and you know I'd advise that we even leave some of the coarse woody debris out there in the forest because um, that increases or enhances wildlife habitat for certain species. I certainly wouldn't want the lawn to encroach any more um, on the stream but I don't know if the applicant I know you had a Westfield State professor potentially giving you some advice was that did that I mean, she just kind of mentioned that, you know, the trees were deconditioned because of the recent clearing and they're yeah. blowing down. I mean, we had one that wasn't unhealthy looking that literally got blown down in one of the, you know, windstorms over the last couple of months. So, you know, that's kind of what prompted us. We really are kind of just concerned about the proximity of these trees to our house um, and the wind that we get off the mountain that comes down this street is something I've never experienced, I guess. So, um, you know, that's just kind of, kind of our biggest concern is that one of these trees could come down on our house, healthy or not. <laughs> Chair. Uh, yes, go ahead. One thing, one thing I would say with these trees, and I, I know from experience, because I'm up by the park and we have these trees all over the place. Um, once you start selectively thinning these, the rest of them start selectively falling down on things. You know, they grew up together and that's kind of their strength is, is the herd of the trees. And, you know, I've had multiple, um, you know, uh, tree guys will say, express similar opinions to me. And, and I know as we work to remove them from my own property, you know, we, we would leave strategically clusters because they support each other. So, um, you know, from my own personal experience, not a professional forestry opinion, but from my own per, uh, personal experience, you know, if you were going to go into this, you, you would probably just uniformly need to work your way in a little ways. And it wouldn't be so much if there was necessarily like a healthy one, because if you left it alone and it's it's used to existing with 30 of its friends around it, it's probably going to come down. And so if it's a hazard tree to the home, you know, I'm, I'm not I think there's some measures we can take here to promote some habitat and, and you know, not encroach the lawn and um you know, I, I wasn't a, a huge fan of it, but I did hear the recommendation, maybe a couple of them get topped. So there's some habitat there for some, some birds that uh, woodpeckers or other things. Um, maybe we could work some of that in, but uh, it's not necessarily my prerogative to tell these guys they have to live underneath these trees. I'm not in a resource area, but I know that I, my wife and I don't want to live in that scenario. So um, that's just State my opinion. Forester would be very helpful. Uh, uh, sir, I sound again, helpful. sir, please wait until I announce uh, oh, participation I'm sorry. I'm sorry. from the audience. Okay, thank you. Um, I Mr. think Chair? one of the key features we need to 
figure out is where exactly is the 200 foot because that would determine which trees we're really talking about. Um, to the applicants, do you have uh, access to the original plans of the development or from the original land uh, developer? I think it was R. Levesque. So, so we can figure out exactly where the 200 foot line is? No, I don't think so. We have the plan that Meredith shared with us for like the lot and then whatever plans that we got when we bought the property, obviously. Um, but I don't know that it tells us the anything differently than the plan that Meredith showed as far as that, you know, that that uh, 200 foot buffer from the riverfront. Yeah. Um, I know when I we measure, oh, sorry. You know, as you were watching us, you know, our measurement was not really straight because right. of the of the train. There's really approximate. Mm -hmm. and we could be, you know, five to 10 feet off. Of, right. Uh, you know, to your, you know, some, you know, maybe even to, to your benefit. Uh, mm -hmm. as far as the decision that we have to make. So I think that needs, that needs to be something that would, um, should be established first. I think where exactly mm -hmm. is the 200 foot? And then, you know, the decisions probably would be easier for you and for yeah. us. Um, the only other thing I can add is that the lot next to us where the signs are in place, those are covered by trees and we're actually deeper into the woods. They just recently cleared that lot to build that house next mm -hmm. door. So that kind of uncovered all of those signs, but those signs were all there in deeper into the woods. I think the people who lived here before us either took down the signs or they did never put them up because they were living here. Just okay. the, the ones on the, on the corners mm -hmm. of the property are there. Um, David, I, I would think yes. that the that the established lawn <clears throat> would indicate the line of delineation for this mm -hmm. whenever it was approved. However, you know, was that six, seven years ago? How how old is your home? When was the home built? 2018. I'm sorry. 2018. Oh, very recent. Yes, yeah. new. Yeah. <clears throat> so why don't we accept that? I, I would assume they were put it at what mm -hmm. somebody looked it up a map and decided it was about 200 feet from the resource. Wouldn't you agree? Well, it looks like the lawn ha has the, the silt fence right beyond it. So that obviously was the limit of work. Um, I'm not sure if it was exact, exactly the 200 foot buffer. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's probably close. Yeah, but, and, and uh, it's established. It's something that, you know, yeah. that was done with thought in 2018. <clears throat> so I would, I would say all of these trees are within the 200 foot buffer, but, <clears throat> but I do agree that, that some selective pruning and removal <clears throat> is probably warranted, especially if they are a threat to the home. Well, that's, that's the key word, selective. Who's gonna select it? <laughs> And we're not we're not foresters, um, and as Meredith said. So, um, and as Alex said, once you start cutting the trees, where do you stop? Uh, you know, how do you make that decision? You know, there's a lot of trees there, and, and and quite a few of them, if they fell, would exactly would hit the house. You know, it's not said it's not just a couple. But, um, Mr. Any other? Chair. Yes, Cliff. I was yes. just going to say, I kind of agree with Alex that, uh, you know, you don't want anybody living in a, in a danger zone, you know what I mean? And, you know, and, and you just said that there's a, several of the trees that could, that if they fell, would, could hit the house. I'm not saying they're going to, but I mean, it'd be their prudence if they, if they were to get a forest forester to look at it, but you know, that's, that's going to cost a homeowner, you know, some extra money there. You know, I'm always on the side of keeping the cost down, but, um, you know, you were out there. I, I wasn't. So could you leave a recommendation? I'm just throwing this out there that any tree that could possibly hit the house, you could give the okay now for them to work on those. And then if they wanted to go with anything deeper, um, that's when they would have to, you know, get a hold of a forester or something like that you know this way i mean you could tell she's she's on edge because uh you know nobody wants to live in in fear 
that something could happen. You know what I mean? Um, I, I'm just throwing that out there just so everybody thinks. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm more apt to let them, you know, take down the trees that are, that are you know, in danger, you know, in danger in their livelihood right now. Um, you know, it's especially if there's a re a replanting plan, especially if, if the applicant is willing to put in some kind of natural shrub, natural vegetation, which you're going to want to anyway, because otherwise it'll look pretty, uh, pretty ugly out there. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that cliff. I'm telling you the state foresters are actually just, free. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk, but they got uh, not, some not yet, sir. just please wait. No, I'm trying. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> any other questions from the commission? Um, Meredith, yes. Yeah, I just, I think um, topping some trees might, might be a good compromise. Um, like Alex was saying, you know, once you start taking one down, they're all going to start falling down. So what if we top some and took some down? I don't know. It seems like um, a varied approach might be a good compromise. And then replanting with native species and treating some invasives in there might make it um, a fair trade-off. But um, one other thing to consider is that if we're letting some people cut trees, other neighbors are going to want to cut trees too. And now we're end up clear cutting the riverfront area. And that's not how it was permitted in the first place. So I understand we don't want anyone's home to be damaged. Absolutely not. But we also have to protect resources. So mm. topping might be a good, mm. a good compromise. Again, I'm just, I just like to know where the 200 foot is. I'm not sure if it's at the silt fence yeah. or not. Um, yeah, what's odd is that the, the sign is at the edge of the lawn. The neighbor's signs are at the edge of um, these folks' lawn. You would think that the developer would have maximized every inch and made lawns as big as possible. So. Hmm. And usually when this construction project gets started, it's surveyed and silt fence is laid out according to the plan. Right. So well, Mr. The, Chairman, a question is- Go ahead, Jim. Can, can we get access to the developer and look at the original plans? Cause we, we may very well have them on file. And if we can get the DEP number and yeah, we, have the, we have the plans. We have the oh. plans. It's just interpreting them in the field is, was a little challenging because oh, okay. signs Even, are in one place and the, we measure just David and I just measured one transect. Right. But you know, I was going all over it because it would go around a tree and over the brush pile and it just wasn't completely accurate. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, and again, I think we're talking plus or minus five feet. I, I don't know why. I don't know why this is a critical item, <clears throat> but maybe a forester is. Maybe maybe the way the board wants to go on this is to invite uh, or have the applicant invite a forester to come out and make recommendation. Is that what you guys are thinking? I think that's a good idea, Tom. After listening in and not being not seeing the site, but also in prioritize any tree that may potentially hit the building. You and definitely then, need a forester. And then go from that point on. And the po I think the forester would uh, provide value and also give a good baseline for any future changes there. Also substantiate our decision. Okay. Any other if comments could, from the commission? If I could add, I, I, I support that as well. I think um, Jim's recommendation is a good one. I think also that just for the protection of the house that a forester is probably a good choice just to uh, try to maintain the health of that forested area to prevent further uh, loss of trees and, and uh, risking of the trees falling on the house. I so vote aye. Aye. How do we want, <laughs> how do we want to do this then, Mr. Chairman? Do we just want to ask the applicant to come back to us? after they've sought the advice of a 
of a forester. Mr. Chairman, can I just yeah. say something? I put Chris in the waiting room until his item comes up. It's right, obviously he's not following the rules of the chair. Thank I would, you very I much. I would like to make a comment, though. I, I really don't want to comment on everyone, but when I have, when I'm, you guys are ready. Me, you Mark, it's also not your time. Now. I'll do the same for you. Please follow oh, the rules whoa, of the chair. Whoa, whoa. Hey, that's not fair. I had a good, good advice. Wait for a these minute, people. just follow. Mark, I had good. In, okay, I will. I had great advice for these people. Then I you wait till I the public wait. comment section, please. Yes, I will. Thank you. I appreciate it. I think it's the the, uh, the will of the commission that the forest would be very helpful both for the applicant and also for our understanding of what's happening out there. Um, seeing that there are no other questions or comments from the commission, I would invite questions or comments from the audience. So Mr. Dupuy, if you'd like to make some comments, go right ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, I introduced myself. I'm dealing with similar projects. I hear Tom, you guys using a lot of words like assuming that you guys know where the buffer is. Um, you know, I think everybody who's near a buffer that wants to develop should uh, consult with GZA or if they can't afford it. I know that uh, you can speak with NRCS and I believe they offer free wetland evaluations. But if if you're indeed, maybe you have an extra 50 feet of trees you can cut down. I don't know. But I don't think it's fair to just say, oh, just assume that the developer put the tree line right on the edge and a forester, that's that's great. But the forester doesn't know where the uh, the 200 foot mark is. So my advice to you all, you seem like a great young couple trying to make the most out of your home there. Um, I would say GZA, which would probably be, you know, cost you some money or try out NRCS first. Uh, they're a great group of people. Very helpful. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Um, so I guess it, there's two conditions, one or two concerns, one the forester and one where the 200 foot line is. So um, perhaps if we go back to the, to the records, do we have an as built plan for this particular project? No, they well, I'd let the forester. Haven't. They have not, the uh, developer didn't file a certificate of compliance yet. We don't have an as-built. And okay. they recently in the past, I'd say year or so, they asked for a certificate of compliance application, but they never submitted it and we have a bond. So I can reach out to them and say, are you gonna finish this up? I think there was an issue with stormwater not being I'm not yeah. sure if it was done correctly or, or done at all. And that's that I think is holding up the process. Do you know about, is that true? I or think so? the developer didn't complete all of the items that were necessary to be completed. And there was another person who kind of came in towards the end who developed the rest of the homes. And he's the one who went out and put out the signs one day. So that's all I know. But I know there's been some issues with the original developer. So, okay. these poor people are trying to keep how trees from falling on their house, but uh, I guess they need to file a notice of intent. Meredith, take that uh, one. Uh, sorry. Okay. So, what's the you know, the, uh, the will of the commission as far as this particular project? Do you have a recommendation. Yeah, I, I'd like I'd like the applicant to agree to come back to us after consulting a, a forester. And if you guys want to. Okay, okay, Mr. Dupas, right. I'm going to put you back in the waiting room until your item comes up. Are you guys willing to do that? That's, I guess, the question to you. Are you willing to put this on hold and talk to somebody who knows trees and probably a worthwhile adventure? Yeah, and it, it sounds like we kind of have to in order to move forward anyway. So, I mean, I think we obviously have to look into what it would cost to do all of that, but, um, and I'd also want to know sort of, do we have to start from scratch with a new application when we no. do, or do I just no. reach out to Meredith? No, we no, no, would we just continue it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, this is your application. We can continue it. We've opened the public care. We can continue it for months if we had to. And um, I can look up some names of foresters. 
um, our NRCS is also a great resource. And um, I can even reach out to the, de to the developer and try to get them to close out the notice of intent and see if they'll do that. I like hearing you say that about reaching out to the developer because they do bear a responsibility here yeah. to close up the project to benefit uh, obviously for, for us, but for the, uh, for the homeowners out there, it's got, it's got to get wrapped up. And the ab as built should establish exactly where the 200 foot line is, right? Yeah. Cause that was where the signs were going. So that's part yeah. of the complying with the order. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. So, so I can't promise they'll do anything, but I can reach out and say, hey, can you guys move forward with right. closing out this? Okay. So, sorry, go ahead. Right. So you're making that in form of a motion, Tom? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I'll make a motion that with the understanding that the applicant will return to us uh, once they further research these trees, that we continue this hearing until our next meeting on the 25th. Okay, and Meredith will reach out to the developer See if we get an as-built plan for this property. All right, do we have a second? I'll second, I'll second that. All right, any, any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, all in favor? Okay, Carl? Yes. Um, Tom? Yes. Jim? Yes. Alex? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Okay, so we'll continue till our next meeting, which is May? 25th. 25th, okay, at <laughs> 6.30. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. All right, item C, uh, five Ryder Road, continued from April 27th. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Dupuis, back in the waiting room, I am not, with your permission, I'm not going to allow him until the enforcement action comes up for his claim. Is that okay? or? It's up to you. I mean, you're... Well, you're the chair. If you want him in and let him do his thing, that's fine. But uh, that's up to you. I think we need to be careful and, and not inhibit public participation. Okay. I know I know that uh, that it's slowing us down, and it's and I also know they they're just not familiar with the rules of uh, Robert's rules of procedure. So I'd be careful with that call, Mr. Chairman. I'll let him back um, in. Go ahead. I'll I'll take care of it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Meredith, uh, Five Rider Road. Yes, I'm not seeing um, Miss Abishan here, Abishid Millie. Um, I think she actually was going to come later. Can we continue this till the end of our meeting? Are we all, okay? Can we take it out of order? She yes, was going to. Uh, okay, I entertain a motion to take this item out of order. Until the applicant appears. So, so moved. Do you have a second? Second. Okay. Tom. Yes. Jim. Yep. Carl. Yes. Alex. Yes. Cliff. I lost Cliff. Okay. Well, I'll vote yes as well. All right. Thank you. All right. Item D, 36 Janelle Drive. Again, continue from April 27th. Yep, so we, um, I was going to discuss, have you guys discuss the enforcement um, for this RDA. Um, so can you take it out of order? Just to have a yeah. motion. So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, uh, all in favor, Tom? Yes. Jim? Yep. Carl? Yes. Alex? Yes. Cliff? Not back yet. I'll vote yes as well. Awesome. All right, so we're going to... Um, 5C. 5C. Okay. So this minutes. was the, yeah, 36 Janelle Drive. This was the clearing on Mr. Um, Beltrandi's property, actually. Uh, so on somebody else's property, the property owner that did the clearing has subsequently installed the erosion controls, hydro seeded the clearing and planted the seven um, trees that we asked them to. Um, I did not go out there, but they sent me some photos. 
I communicated with Mr. Beltrandi and he was fine with the restoration. So I don't think we can close out the enforcement right now because it's not vegetated, but they have taken the steps um, to address the problem, the issue. Okay, so you're satisfied that they are implementing the plan? Yes, the plan was implemented um, properly and now we just need a monitor to make sure the vegetation um, gets reestablished. Re okay. Okay, so let's have a, a motion to again continue the enforcement order, but note that the applicant has uh, completed uh, what the uh, commission has requested. So moved. We have a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, uh, Tom. Yes. Jim. Yes. Carl. Yes. Alex. Yes. Okay. Cliff, again, doesn't yes. seem to be here anymore. I'm are back. You? I'm back. You're back. Oh, well, there you are. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. I'll vote yes as well. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll go back to item D. Um, I'll make a motion that we go back to item, what, 4D? Yes. Do you have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, Tom? Yes. Jim? Yep. Carl? Yes. Alex? Yes. And Cliff? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, so this is a- Do we, yes. <sighs> He's back. Yeah. Okay. This is so uh, entertaining. Yeah. <sighs> um, do we have one of the applicants? Uh, uh, looks like Melissa is here with us. Yes, Ms. Ancilli is here. Um, do you want to just introduce us? We haven't really discussed the RDA. We opened it up, but I think it's just for a chain link fence in the buffer zone. Correct. Hi, this is Melissa. Um, so I had sent um, in a Word document, Meredith, remember the where I sketched out on the map that you sent us the 50, 100 foot buffer and then where the fence would be? So it's uh, white vinyl privacy fencing across the front and sides of the yard, and then black chain link across the back of the yard. Yep, I can um, let me pull up the plan for you guys. Where did I go? Hold on, it's opening. All right, let me show you guys the plan. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> How can you can folks see this map? Yes. You want me to zoom in or? Okay. So again, resource stream, BVW edge, down here, their property line. Um, and this orange line is representing the 50 foot buffer. And Melissa, where do you want to put the fence again? I'm sorry, I can't. So we want to put the fence six to 12 inches from the property line all around the property, the backyard. I actually think that might be a good idea, even though it is within the 50 foot buffer. But in this case, since there was an issue with the adjacent property getting cleared without permission or whatever happened, I don't know, but without on somebody else, clearing on somebody else's property, I think the fence might allow these folks to just stay on their property and keep everybody happy. Is there a right away that cuts through the bottom right hand corner of that fence? Is that what uh, that's showing? I don't know what that is. This subdivision is quite, is older. It's like, I think it was in 2003 that. That's the New England trail, Tom. I believe oh. that's it going through. And I believe uh, Mr. Beltrandi might have an easement on some of that, um, or he has an application in for that. I think that's managed by, it's federal, but managed by the state, I think. And that hooks to the Monadnock and the uh, Seven the, Sisters the, Trail, northbound. The Metacomet Trail. Metacomet, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, thank you, Jim. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah. It's weird though, because that is like, there's no trail there because we were out there and it's, 
that's somebody's yard next door. Right. <laughs> I don't, I don't, could that mean something else? It, it might, but I'm aware though that that trail is not maintained by all, not all segments oh. of that trail are, is, is maintained. Regarding that segment, I, I can't speak mm -hmm. anymore. Right. John Beltrandi would certainly know. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll do that as may. Uh, is the is the application then acceptable? I mean, the applicant mentioned six to twelve inches. I would prefer the twelve inches, uh, just to give a little, little uh, leeway. Um, That's okay with us. Okay. Then you you wouldn't do any mowing or any activity behind the fence. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, any further discussion from the commission? All right, seeing so none, any questions or comments from the audience concerning this project? All right, seeing none, I entertain a motion to close the public meeting. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, Tom? I'll vote yes. Jim? Yes. Carl? Yes. Alex? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Thank you. I need a motion on the recommendation. I'll yeah, I'll make a motion. A motion. Or, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh. All right, I'll, I'll take it. I'll make a recommendation that we approve of the negative three determination with the following conditions. The fence shall be installed 12 inches inside the property line. Any disturbed soil shall be loam seeded and revegetated prior to the removal of erosion controls and no mowing or dumping allowed past the fence. That's my motion. Do we have a, do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Tom? I'll vote yes. Jim? Yes. Carl? Yes. Alex? Yes. Cliff? Yes. All right, and I'll vote yes as well. Thank you, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, good luck. Thanks. Item E, 42 Jadel Drive. Uh, installation of a gazebo, French trains and arborvitae trees within the 100 foot buffer zone. So in accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts general laws, chapter 131, section 40, public meeting will be held on May 11th, 2021, a virtual meeting. This hearing is for a request for determination of applicability submitted by Paul and Sean Boyle for the installation of a gazebo, French drains, and the planting of arborvitae trees within the 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands located at 42 Janelle Drive. Do we have an applicant present? Yes. All right. I think your, your, our statement says exactly what you want, but you want to just explain where these are relative to the buffer zone? Uh, sure. I sent over a, um, there we go. Yep. I'm just sharing. Um, Mr. Boyle sent this plan over this afternoon. Let's see. Can everyone see? There you go. Okay, uh, if you could see the uh, existing in-ground pool, right? And what we're mm -hmm. looking to do is the yellow rectangular box and uh, put a gazebo in there. And then on the blue square, uh, install new fencing to enclose the area. And then on the green slashes would be a new plantings of uh, Arborvitaes. Okay, so the arborvitaes would be next to the the new fence of your neighbors, correct? Right, and with our it'll be on the inside of our fence. We'll be installing a, a fence down that line also. Okay, all right. Um, is the is the bottom red line the fifty foot? That upper? is the fifty foot. Okay. 
Right? So most of the project is outside the 50 foot, except for the arborvitae. Correct. Okay. All right, well, questions well, or comments from the commission? Meredith, can you just scroll up the site plan? I think that the the labels for these lines are at the bottom of the drawing. Oh. I, I said scroll up, but yeah. Oh. Scroll up, down. Um, yeah, just so you guys know, we just reviewed, this is 36. So yep. this is 42 right next door. And so it's the same drawing, um, but just focused on 42. So. I actually was able to look at this from when we looked at 36. I looked over just because you can see everything. And, um, you know, this is, it's already lawn. So no tree removal. Um, it's just, I think it's just lawn where the gazebo would be going. Is that correct, Mr. Boyle? Correct. Okay. And so here, can you see the key, Tom, now? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. That's, that's what I was looking for. Would there be soil disturbance, Mr. Boyle, with this, with this work? No, besides uh, where the gazebo is, we'll be putting a concrete pad there. So we have to, you know, dig out to, for the, to pour the concrete. Okay. Yeah. So in that case, we probably want to see some erosion controls um, around the work area. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. Do you guys have questions? This is pretty straightforward. Really has nothing to do with the with the project. The project looks fine, Sean. But why put a fence next to a fence? Unless it's well, going to be we have a pool the, the pool, you you have to have the pool enclosed by fence. Oh, so there's already a fence. There's a fence there now. Um, which, because what we're going to do is expand it down further to enclose the gazebo also now. I see. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, Meredith, do you think we need to do a site visit since you've already seen the, the property? No, I think I can take back my notes. I mean, I think because it's in existing law and they're really not impacting the resources. I would say if the commission was comfortable, we could approve with a negative three and um, we would want to see erosion controls prior to the work being conducted. And um, I want and no additional um, vegetation to be put in the buffer zone. I don't know what you usually do with your lawn clippings, but um, we want to kind of keep that out of the buffer zone and the, especially the wetland. But overall, I think this is, I don't think we need to review this again. And it's just a lawn outside of 50 foot buffer. Okay. So I think. All right. Any other qu any questions or comments from the commission? Seeing none, any questions or comments uh, on this project from the audience? Seeing none, entertain a motion to close the public meeting. So moved. Do you have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor? Uh, Tom? Yes. Alex? Yes. Carl? Yes. Jim. Yes. Cliff. Cliff. I'll get gone again. I'll vote yes as well. Thank you. Uh, you can stop sharing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So entertain What's a motion that? on the on the recommendation. Uh oh, someone's gonna have to get creative. Yeah. I, didn't... I guess it'd be a negative three. Is that what you'd recommend, Meredith? Yeah, that's allowing work in the buffer zone with some conditions. Yeah, so I'll make a motion that we approve with a negative three condition uh, with the understanding that uh, silt fence or silt, some sort of erosion barriers will be erected. The administrator will be notified before any work is done. And um, what was the other one? There was some, oh, and, and please, or, or 
the applicant shall not dump lawn clippings into the buffer zone. All right, that would be my motion. Right, do you have a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Alex? Yes. Carl? Yes. Jim? Yes. Tom? Yes. Cliff? I'll vote yes. Okay, thank you. Motion passes. Yeah, I don't John, good luck. I liked your site map, by the way. Thank you. Mr. Chair, can we go back to um, Five Rider Road? I think the applicant is here for that one. Is that okay? All right, need a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we re-resume the normal order of the meeting. I'll second that. All right. All in favor, Alex? Yes. Uh, Carl? Yes. Jim? Yes. Tom? Yes. Cliff? Uh, I'll vote yes as well. Okay, so we're back to Five Rider Road. Again, continue from April 27th. Uh, we have the applicant. I'm here. Uh, uh, hey, Millie. Yes, hello. Welcome to the, me Welcome to the meeting. All right, so uh, just tell the commission what you'd like to do. Okay, so what I'm looking at, um, I know some people were out here and I wasn't available um, and then neither was my drawing. So it kind of made it a little bit confusing, um, but I will be available um, again. Um, what I was looking to do is possibly um, build a new deck, making mine um, about double the size. And then on my driveway, I was going to make it longer in the front, put a patio and a pool. That's my latest one. Because the other one, I guess, was kind of confusing. I don't know. Yeah. To me, it's clear as day. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I guess if you were here to look at it. But so you can see where Ryder Road is on the bottom of the picture. Um, and then I kind of put where Route 202 is. Um, the water's kind of like staggered down in the bottom. At the end of the driveway there is about 50 feet and then off the deck it's about 70. And it's all existing areas that I'm just looking to do some stuff with. Um, and I know this is good for three years. I can't get anyone to talk to me until I get permission. Um, even the pool place in Westfield hung up the phone on me last year. Um, I know it's busy time. So I don't know that this is gonna happen right away. And then with the lumber prices, the deck. So um, I don't know, I'm probably talking too much. So. <laughs> no, you're, you're doing great, Millie. Okay. Um, so, and the other picture that I had sent last week that you were able to peek at, it kind of shows um, what's existing. So um, that whole area where the orange is till the top of the driveway is about split in half down the middle. And part of it's my current driveway. Yes, right where she's drawing the line. And part of that's my current driveway towards the house. And then the rest of it's just like open area where there was like a swing set at one point. And um, so I'm looking to split it the other way. Yeah, let me show the commission some pictures of the site. Um, that, I thought that drawing was perfect and it really highlighted what you want to do where and just so the commission understands most of the work is or all of the work is would be where there is an existing driveway or a cleared lot Correct. and it's going to be outside Correct. of the 50, 50 foot buffer zone. So let me just, um, I... Is it is Sorry. it altered area, Meredith? All it's altered? already altered. It's okay. already altered, yeah. All right. So let, I can show, let's see, let me get some pictures. Okay, hold on one sec. I think, so this is Millie's side yard looking out at Ryder Road. Um, I think a tree came down there or something, but this, her whole house is in the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, the wetland, there's a nice wetland in the back here. And this is the deck she was talking about, um, right? Millie, is this where you yes. wanna redo the deck? Correct, I was looking to take that one down and um, make it about twice as big the length wise of the, length -wise of the house. Yep, okay, so existing stuff. Um, 
uh, where, oh yeah, so Millie did have a tree, a, the top of a tree fell down in her yard. This is, oops. So that's, this that's is after story. two of the other trees fell on my truck. Right. And so her, she's had some tree issues. I'm, I'm terrified of trees, but I'm not looking to take any down at this time unless. Yeah, I think part of this permit would be to click, uh, get, you know, remove these trees and we appreciate you waiting respectfully and getting our permission before you get that out of there because it's right. close to the wetland. This was the tree that um, the top fell off and luckily it did not land on Millie's home. But, um, you know, I think the commission should consider letting this be cut, not stumped, because um, I would want it to further fall. Let's see. So wetland buffer again. Right in that area, Meredith is where I'd put like the fence to go down. Yeah. And so we, when I was in the fall, I, I went over here and visited Millie and um, measured 50 feet and it was somewhere out here from the wetland edge. So I was thinking, you know, if her and I marked that in the fields and they got the erosion controls in and that was the limit of work. This would be pretty straightforward project. So again, cleared lot already, and then it drops down um, significantly to the wetland edge. Let me see if I got a picture of your driveway. I'm not sure if I did. Shoot. Sorry, guys. You know, I take too many pictures of trees, I think. <laughs> I mean, I'm here. <laughs> So over to the right over here, you can't really see, but there's an existing driveway where um, we'd like to do the pool. How about? All right. I can all right, thank you. you. I can show you over here. <laughs> He's outside. <laughs> the, oh, see, this is why Zoom is good. Yeah. I love how she's running out there. Yeah, yeah so it is, right. just so you guys yeah. know, it's an existing driveway. So that's the driveway. <laughs> and the cleared area where she took the rest of the pictures. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Uh, this is a site visit during a meeting. This is a first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I know when you were here for the site visit, you had a quick question about the retaining wall. So I'm not sure which commissioners were with you, but it's just this oh. retaining wall here on the side of the driveway. The chipmunks chewed through um, the grass right there so much that it, all the dirt started coming out and it started falling. Yeah, I just didn't know where that was when you yeah, wrote it. I, up, like, yeah, I see. I saw it when I was there. It's that's okay. fine. Okay, questions from the commission. I approve. <laughs> do you have questions from the commission, remember. please? Um, do I have questions? No, no, I mean the commissioners. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, you've done Mer a great job. Meredith, could you put the site map, map back up? Yep. Uh, let me see. One second. This one? Yeah. Okay, Bridal Road, her house. Yeah. And it looks like the fence is, is you know, and again, I guess Millie took this, this measurement 50 feet. But during construction of the pool and the patio, how do we how do we do erosion controls for a project that may not happen for two and a half years? How do we how do we assure that in two and a half years someone remembers to put down the silt fence or the um, or the you know the straw waffles? That would be my concern. I, my second concern is I'd love to see some kind of signage back here at that fifty foot mark maybe two signs, you know, the, our cute little, our cute little conservation area sign, just to, I, I know these are responsible owners, but just to help remind people that, um, that, you know, very little activity should happen beyond that point. That's, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, I don't mind that. And how Meredith had explained it to me was that before a project's done, she needs to come out and look at it to make sure that the erosion control's okay before a project started. So that's how I was told it has to be. So before, it, it's just like, I, I didn't know which steps to take first and nobody will talk to me unless I get permission. But most I think most places would know 
Um, so, I mean, I guess you could write that up in the agreement, but that's how she explained it to me is that you would come out and look to, at the erosion control before any work started. And it kind of looks like you drew it in crayon. I drew it in pen and I colored it. Well, no, no, I'm not judging you. That's yes. the only <laughs> thing you're required is the crayon, but I'm Please just saying, as blocking. I look at this, yeah. I'm going to get blocked again. You, you're yes. doing it all right, babe. Wait. Okay, you, don't, please ignore him. Don't. Okay. Don't. okay. okay. Uh, I was going to say, okay, I didn't know that that was. A we're going to get a crayon out. We're just going to draw a drawing. Okay. Thank you. Out. We've had yeah, enough. Thank you. Thank you. What I was trying to say was that, yes, if this is two and a half years down the road, Millie's going to do a project sheet. I'm going to write in the permit or you guys are going to allow the work to be done and the erosion controls installed for the project starts and Millie's going to contact our office and say, hey, we're going to do the project now. My erosion controls are in place at the 50 foot line. Please come and check them. I think one, a good idea would be to install, have the signs installed um, immediately, like in the next, you know, six months or something. So as contractors come and go, you're going to have a lot of people on the site that won't necessarily know what the permit says. So if they see those signs, they say, oh, we got to put the erosion controls in and, you know, us on that. Um, obviously, Mary, you're looking very really beautiful. I'm telling you, it's not about the glasses. Uh, sir, stop talking. <laughs> this is really, can you keep, Peter? <laughs> Hold on, I'm muting, I'm yep. muting, I'm muting. Would you like me to put them in the waiting room? Oh, I'm muted. Oh, shit, no. All right, that's it. All right, Peter, thank you. That's completely inappropriate, and it's yes, really it disruptive. Was. We can't get anything done. Okay, he's in the waiting room. Thank you. Um, so we have, at the time, um, a concern about the, the time of doing this project and recommendation put in the signs. Um, How does that appear to the, the entire commission as far as putting the signs in first? I think that's a good idea, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And um, I, just to clarify, this is a, a determination of ap applicability? Yes. Okay. So she's going to be getting a written document anyway. So right. it'll list everything. Uh, so that it's Mildred, uh, this is Jim. Yeah. So you'll, you'll be getting a document that'll kind of uh, explain uh, the, the main uh, requirements. All right. Well, thank you. Any other questions from the commission? All right. Any questions or comments from the audience concerning this particular project? I can just, can I just ask one more question? I just want to clarify. I believe Meredith already answered this for me, but it's been a while. Um, so this takes place of regular construction permits, correct? No. No. You also, in addition to this, have to get a city permit for each project? You'd have to talk to the building, you know, building department for that. Okay. I, yeah, okay. I don't know off the top of my head if you need okay. a to do a pool or a deck. That's oh, built. Okay. But she, okay. the building inspector, will check with us and say, "Hey, this is in the buffer. Are you all set with it?" And I just say, "Yep, they're good to go." And then you can get a building permit pretty easily. Okay. I believe I talked to him once too. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. All right. So. Entertain a motion to close the public meeting. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Carl? Yes. Tom? Yes. Alex? Yes. Jim? Yes. Uh, Cliff is still not here. I'll vote yes as well. Uh, thank you. We have a motion on the recommendation. I make a motion, Mr. Chairman, for negative three. So I make a motion for a negative three with the following uh, conditions. Uh, first is that the uh, 50 foot buffer zone be marked in the field with stakes prior to any work and uh, conservation commission signage be installed um, based, I think minimum of two, perhaps three based upon the recommendation of the coordinator. Uh, the next is the conservation coordinator shall approve the erosion controls prior to the commencement of work and erosion controls are installed at the 50 foot buffer zone. 
The next is those erosion controls shall be maintained in good condition until the commission, com, a conservation commission coordinator approves their removal. Next, any disturbed soil shall be loamed, seeded, and revegetated prior to the removal of those erosion controls. And the next is trees that are approved by the commission may be cut, but stumps shall remain in place. Um, so those are the basics, uh, the basic conditions. All so right, Jim, second. Yeah, actually, let's, I think we could, rather than saying trees, there's one tree in question mm -hmm. that should be removed now. Um, I, I, I didn't understand that last part of the condition, to be honest. That's confusing language. Um, so the trees that are, any trees, tree or trees, approved by the commission uh, to be cut, can be cut, but the stump shall remain in place. Okay, I guess that's, that's just like future talk, but for now talk, would you consider adding the, the one tree behind the house that um, where the, the top of the tree became severed can be removed? I, I would agree with that and I appreciate the suggestion. Yes. And, and stump in place? Yes. Thank you, Joe. Okay, I'd, be second. To, I'd be happy to second the motion. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, Carl? Yes. Tom? Yes. Alex? Yes. Jim? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Okay, good luck, good luck Millie. Good luck, yeah. Millie. Okay, item five, enforcement. Uh, a, uh, 1223 East Mountain Road, uh, updated stream crossing plan. Okay, do we have an uh, applicant or the engineer to speak to this? Yep, I believe the engineer is here and obviously the applicants are here. Yeah, okay, Terry, if you, you want to go ahead and take it, uh, I'm good with that. Okay, um, I'm Terry Reynolds. Um, I'm here, uh, Mark and Chris Dupuy um, uh, are requesting um, previously approved stream crossing uh, to be expanded from 12 feet to 20 feet to accommodate the fire department requirement for a 20 foot wide drive. Um, and so we've put together a plan uh, for that and I can share it and show it to you if you'd like. Yes, go ahead. Okay. So um, basically it's not a big change from what was previously approved other than the widening. Um, so the, the crossing has been widened um, basically in the same alignment essentially, uh, same general plan. It is still a reduction in impact from what was previously there, what is there currently now. Um, so uh, it's been changed from a metal arch to a concrete uh, culver, open bottom culver um, designed to meet the stream crossing standards. It's a basically a seven foot wide by three and a half foot tall concrete culver. Uh, the stream crossing standards are, are shown here um, where uh, we're meeting the 0.82 feet. Uh, we're at 0.87 uh, for, for the openness ratio. Uh, the banks have been matched set so that it has uh, 1.2 um, for the existing bank. Uh, that's this area here. Uh, we've also maintained the previous design for a channel, a general flow channel, and then an overflow channel um, for this project. Uh, at this point, the Dupuis would like to um, pave it um, going forward. So it would be asphalt paving uh, for the majority of the road with concrete over the culvert. Um, general uh, Erosion controls been main, are being maintained. I've got two check dams here for, for to uh, ensure that we're not getting large flows coming into the intermittent stream. Uh, that's basically it. 
um, not not a big change, um, and still a reduction in into the current impacts that are out there. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions, comments from the commission. I had a question, if I may, um, yes. or actually, a, I guess a couple of questions. Um, how wide is the opening? It wasn't clear to me from the drawings and then sort of related to that, does this include terrestrial as well as aquatic um, areas uh, under the uh, opening? Well, it's, it's obviously not designed for a moose to go under it, um, but, uh, you know, it's designed so that you can, that, you know, raccoons, whatever, you know, smaller species and such um, will be encouraged to go that way. And that's what the openness ratio is all about. It's a flat bottom culvert, kind of different than on every other side of the property. Uh, I'm pretty sure a moose could fit under it. <laughs> you guys are laughing. You act like I'm joking. It's yeah. three and a half feet tall, and it has like, uh, you know, perennial stream. We're going to call it the brook from now on. Okay. Are, are there... Um... You know, rocks, uh, some small boulders going to be inside the culvert? Yes. Some side yeah, of it's substrate. It, it's yeah. intended to be, it's it's not going to have boulders in it. It's it's basically a natural stream substrate is being installed in it. Um, it it basically, this is uh, the section for it. Um, so it's, <laughs> it's four inches of two inch minus natural bottom substrate. <laughs> um, and then two feet of 12 inch minus gravel with fines. It's that. the original substrate because I'm not paying for new substrate. All right. Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. Block me. Mr. Okay, Chairman, uh, I have a question. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Jim. Um, uh, is this crossing oriented pretty much over where the current crossing is? Yes. Okay. Now there were some on the south side, the current cross or the outfall there. I think there's maybe a, a two foot culvert there now. Maybe, I can't remember. Yeah, the current culvert, um, I believe uh, it's- 36 inches. Listed here. 36, okay. Um, yeah, it, it's about, a 16 okay. inch right now. Okay, about where that was, there were some trees there. Um, are you going to be able to save those trees? There, it was directly near this the is being, This is being pulled back from where those trees are. It's all that area, that area is being restored too. After this is done, that's yeah. the final little patch that we're restoring there. So I want to say that. So okay. specific to my question, are we, you going to be retaining those trees that had a, approximately a 12 inch base at five feet? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And are Other you, questions from Mr. Chairman, oh, are you flaring oh, out? Are you flaring um, the uh, exit and the entrance to this? They're called no. bay walls. They, they're a foot thick. I mean, it's really, would you like to do a site walk? I, I've been there. I was just curious if you're gonna if they're gonna be flared. Are you gonna put riprap on them, or are you proposing exposed concrete? I would wall? love to put riprap up there, but I mean, maybe you should come up there and take a site walk because uh, oh, uh, sure. we're gonna have better roads and bridges than Westfield. Okay. No, I mean, I'm not being sarcastic. I mean, you got to come up and look at it. It's yeah. Really... I was I mean, only up not... there at the beginning last year. It's not proposed to be flared. It's going to be a continuous stream flow through. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I got distracted by riffraff. I thought we were talking about the brook. All right. I meant rip rap. No, I, I understand what rip rap is. I'd love to do it, but we have like a foot and a half thick concrete wing walls. I mean, you'd have to talk to my engineer, but that costs money. Yeah, the, the it's really beautiful. Yeah, the, if you come look at it, please. We just come look at it. So I still don't have an answer to my question. <laughs> Are you going to have flared walls with rip wrap? Yes. No. The answer is yes. Okay. And 
Okay. Well, no, I, I really want to answer your question because the answer is yes. Okay. Okay. Terry, uh, hey, Terry, how do you answer that question? It's it guys, we're industrial. looking at a fucking engineered bridge with riprap uh, and waddles. I mean, watch I your don't language. Know. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying if you were to come up and look at it, you'd have all the answers you need. But we're getting one answer from you and one answer from your engineer. So it's a little bit confusing for me anyway. Would you come up and look at it? We don't need to come up and look at it. We've already looked at it and it's not installed yet. We will review it after it's been installed and reviewed and approved. Terry, can you Mary, please just answer approved, the question? It'll be installed in three weeks. The answer is yes. I know I'm not trying to be hostile, but I mean, like, look at the fucking survey. Of, no, I mean, sorry, apologies. Look at the goddamn drawing. Will you please look at it or come and look at it in person? Is that like unreasonable to ask you to come up since you live in the city and look at it? I know it sounds hostile, guys, but I mean, look at this crossing. You're talking about a hundred twenty-five thousand dollar crossing. Okay, Terry, can you or can you move your drawing to show us the opening again? Sure. I'll have this installed tomorrow. Okay, so it's, it. I mean, really, I mean, we can have all the studies done. Please tell me how to put this in. Okay, I'd like uh, some help. Will uh, you please help me? Okay, Jim, can you get yes. your answer from looking at the drawing? It doesn't look like it's flared. I don't see a flare on it. I okay. No, it has wing walls. It really does. I, I don't know how to put it on there, but they're they're an existing thing like okay you thank you it. no no i'm i'm, I'm serious like yeah. if you really look at the uh the engineer drawing the wing walls are the most expensive thing on it okay thank you will you um, please help please what's that please help we're trying to make a decision here so Please let us All right. well, no, no. look at you it. You guys okay. get the decision. Science. You let me know. So, I'll so, it. so I, we note that the city engineer and National Heritage have reviewed and approved the stream crossing plan. Um, but there's a note that Natural Heritage needs to approve the time of year when the crossing could be constructed because no, of their species fine. activity. That's yeah. fine. I mean, we're going to let them release snakes out here anyway. So... Okay. It's not really a big deal, uh, okay. but this crossing is quite interesting. If you would just look at the engineer drawing, I'm pretty well, sure it would answer all your questions. Okay, well, we're looking at it I mean, right now. It, it, so if you just you. look at the small font, like zoom in and look at it, I'm pretty sure it meets every criteria. Okay. Well, we're confident since the yeah, city engineer is approved right now. Yes. Chris, is that you or is that you, Mark? Who's that's, that's me? We, we sound the same. And who's me? Did you say who's me? Yeah, what's oh. your name? Oh, no, my name's Chris, but I'm telling yeah, okay. you, okay. All right, crossing is <laughs> revision five. I'm not sure if we need revision six or revision seven, mm -hmm. but as many times as it takes, we'll get it right oh, eventually. No, I think the commission is satisfied considering the city engineer, Natural Heritage have approved it. Um, well, that's there's positive. one one question that we still, I think, is is pertinent. What's the, what's the question? That I have the answer. In, in the original discussion of this road and the enforcement order, there's no mention of paving. And now you want to pave this driveway? I, I don't ever want to pave my driveway. All right, but uh, you know, it's so the gravel doesn't fall into the the creek. We're calling it a creek now. Uh, whatever you guys want, just let me know, and that's how I'll build it. It sounds like an asshole thing to say, but I'm serious. Yeah, 
The, uh, I, I agree that we should probably address the paving uh, under a uh, NOI and go ahead and uh, and approve the uh, approve the design that's in front of us. Minus yeah, so the I'm uh, paving. This is this is Mark talking here. Um, you know, on the wing wall thing, I don't know if he was just messing with you guys or whatever, but uh, I think that's what he thought was on the plan. He doesn't even um, know what a wing wall is. Whatever the is. plan is, is what, you know, what we're doing, obviously. So we paid it. That's why we paid an engineer to do the plan. But um, um, as far as the road goes, um, in order to, you know, this is going to be a finished product here when we're, when we're dealing with heritage. We're not talking about what we're going to do and then the plan that we're going to change later. We're talking about the final plan. Um, I thought it just made sense to come into reality of it being paved. Um, obviously it would remain gravel until uh, a stormwater management plan is approved. Um, we cannot do that. a stormwater it's management plan that. until our court case is over Hear with the faucet what, because we don't know exactly is. where our roads Excuse coming me, in. Uh, just um, one we're so I'm not going to just keep making imaginary Davis stormwater Davis. management plans. Uh, so that's the, out. the answer for you guys on that question. And that's pretty much all I got to say. Thank you. All right, great. Thanks, Mark. Hey, Meredith, did um, Natural Heritage give you an idea of when this project would be allowed? Meredith, are you there? I can pan back. Um, Terry, we're having, can you stop we can sharing? We finalize the deal that? tomorrow if the lawsuit yep. was finalized. Um, right now, if I could send you guys an email showing you the court schedule. I think um, I saw December or something like that was the, you know, trial or something. You know, I don't know. I have, this, I have some kind of court schedule, but early next spring, we should be uh, completing the deal with Heritage is what we're, we're hoping for. Yeah, so my um, comment was, or what Obviously, we can approve this plan, but it needs to be approved by Heritage. And Mark obviously knows that he's working with Heritage um, and going through the the process with them regarding the conservation plan. Um, I don't Heritage, know. Have I they don't seen, know. Have they seen this plan? Heritage? They may not have seen the last the last little update. I don't know, but I'll make sure that I, I forward it over to them and get that approved. I don't think it'll be a. Uh, you know, one way or another to them on, on the road being, you know, paved. So, I mean, I think from a fire truck standpoint, going up a slight hill, it makes better sense to have it paved for traction. Um, but, you know, that's the, uh, the plan would be in order to put the crossing in with the concrete top, restore the area there. And, uh, you know, I think down the road, the commission is going to have to take a look at, uh, you know, I know right now it's, you don't want us to really do anything, but I think from uh, your standpoint, it might make sense to let us complete some of our projects up enforcement period. Uh, that way you guys can maybe keep an eye on it and get reports. Um, I think if you guys are going to just delay us until the, uh, you know, last possible minute of this five-year enforcement thing, then it's going to uh, do you guys less justice uh, from a monitoring standpoint. Um, and that's all, that's it. Yeah, and during one of our, I did send this um, to Heritage and Mr. Paulson wrote back and said, as long as it was meeting the stream crossing standards and we were okay with it, they were fine with the plan. I can't remember if we talked about the paving or not, but that's, they weren't concerned about that. I mean, this is part of removing the culvert that was put in illegally and putting in this bridge essentially is part of the restoration and the engineering plan is exactly what we're looking for. The paving, if heritage approves that, uh, I don't, obviously they're gonna be doing that. And as Mark said, they're gonna be filing a stormwater management plan with the city at some point, and then paving would be reviewed. Um, Meredith, did heritage also suggest that there would be a time frame? Where this work should be done like September or June they have not said yes to 
No, I don't know. It's usually when the snakes are not active. Um, so if we don't do snakes. it, if we don't do it during the off snake season, we have to have uh, GZA or some kind of uh, snake specialist on site during the work. And we probably will just wait till the off season because it seems like there's a drier time to install it, I guess, maybe in uh, fall or, in, you know, fall time is drier than springtime. You know, I don't know, but um, we're willing to work around the dry schedule too. I mean, we're not really in a rush there. It's really stabilized. And, uh, you know, there's a 40 foot pipe in there right now. There's a 40 foot pipe that crosses it. So 20 is half of that. So from a standpoint, it's actually getting reduced in half. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, from our perspective, it would be better to replace the culvert with the bridge when it's dry. I don't know if that works for the snake timing. And Mark, like Mark said, if they do it during the active season, they have to have a snake, a herpetologist out there to um, make sure there's no snakes around where they're doing construction. But if they do in the off season, they don't have to do that. So, but it could be wetter. So timing is going to be important and they would just. But I'm pleased, Mark, I'm pleased to hear that you're working with uh, natural heritage. That's, that's good. I'm glad you're, uh, I'm glad you're attuned to what their wants are. So Meredith, from my, my impression this evening, we're, we're approving this, the, the crossing plan. I mean, paving seems to be part of a, a future project up there relative to the storm water? Right, I mean, we're only approving what we asked them to do as part of the enforcement order. Um, right. We didn't ask for paving and that needs to be reviewed. Yeah, paving is gonna be a final, final deal. I mean, we're not looking to pave and then put a bunch of traffic up and down a paved road, you know, it's gonna right. be a, that was just a last means so I don't have to, you know, but it's it's gonna stay in a, you know, an orderly, you know, gravel condition, you know, as it is not going to get wider or anything until it's till the stormwater management plan is comes in where we're not really doing any, any more improvements. That's really uh, where we're at on the pro on the project. So I have Meredith, a another question. Sorry. Yeah. The stormwater would be part of a notice of intent. Well, water plan. I think it's covered under the enforcement, honestly, to tell you the truth. I mean, I think that, you know, I have to have uh, that, the building permits, the fire plan. Um, the stormwater management plan is engineered. So I guess I have to send, you guys would also have to approve that. Um, and I think the city, you know, en city engineer would have to approve that too, or whoever does stormwater. Um, so, so we can consider so the paving at that time. But yeah, yeah I, think, it right I, now. I think my the big hold off is is part of the plan is might involve maybe even a little more clearing of trees um, in areas that they're allowing us uh, to develop as part of our uh, heritage plan. So it just doesn't really make sense. Um, you know, we had Terry do a plan. We kind of jumped the gun on that and had him do already do a plan. I think he might have approved it already, but um, it's just um, it doesn't look like that plan is going to be used. So um you know, I'm going to try to reduce, like, for instance, the front building, the little front building there that requires a permit because it's over 400 feet. It requires uh, like a catch drain basin that needs to be there. And uh, I mean, we're talking about a forty five hundred dollar, uh, you know, what I thought was going to be a farm stand. So I'm not going to I'm not going to install a five thousand dollar drain for a four thousand dollar farm stand. You know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. There's, there's issues we're working through on that, but I mean, as a whole, um, once the court case is over, we're going to finalize with heritage and then we're going to, we're going to, I think this, I would say before we finalize with heritage, we hope to actually have that crossing installed. So that's really what we're hoping for. But, um, you know, we might have to even wait till we finalize with heritage to get the, the crossing installed. I don't know if that's what, something they're going to want. So we'll have to look into that. Okay, so, go ahead, say, so we can approve the stream crossing plan and then before it gets done, um, I mean, we're gonna need either an RDA or a notice of intent for additional clearing in the buffer zone and for the paving. The stormwater permit either gets reviewed, it always gets reviewed by the city engineer, but it's- 
no weird. more clearing will be done in the buffer. Our plan oh. doesn't include our plan doesn't include any more buffer work. That's okay. our plan for our whole development plan with Fish and Game is designed around the buffers. And we restored the buffer that we damaged, and then we're leaving an additional gap for driving vehicles around that area. And it's never going to encroach upon that again because it's going to be the buffers are all going to be finalized in the plan. You know what I mean? So that's I wasn't sure based how, on that sketch. That yeah, they, they wanted us to restore the buffers and they didn't want that to be part of our plan. So that's what we went with, you know. Okay. Good. Yeah, I just wasn't sure along the road, but I think you're going to, yeah, you'll be outside of the 100 foot buffer. You'll be closer to the clearing that's already cleared where you're going to take out more trees. Is that right? Yeah. And we would, you know, we'll make sure that we submit some kind of a, uh, if we haven't already got it delineated where it is, I'll make sure I'll get that area delineated before we do any clearing and submit that. But um, yeah, we don't, we don't plan on doing anything until we make the deal with heritage um, as far as, you know, improvements or anything like that, because we don't really know what the outcome of the lawsuit is going to be. So we just don't want to do something that we're going to have to redo later or, you know, something like that, you know? All right. So this evening, we are just going to approve the plan itself as part of uh, their, you know, their uh, march to, to satisfy the, enforcement order correct right okay it. yeah it's the right. so commission understands. i think what was what was the stipulation on how much notice we need to give the commission before the uh, installation begins of the because i remember last time we had to give like three days or five days notice or something before we we began installing the culvert um, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, okay. well, that's a good point. And one other thing is it's on the plan, and I we talked about this before, is that um, there's going to be a monitor. Yep. Yeah, the uh, – what's I can't remember the name. Whoever our other wetland consultant is, he's already con consult. he's already hired um, and paid to be there during the installation. So he'll be there on site during the installation. Regardless of what time of the year it is, we're going to have our wetland specialists – um, on site during the installation. That's already All paid right. for. Thank you. Uh, Meredith, uh, we lost your voice. Your audio. The last time you were talking, uh -oh. we, couldn't, we couldn't hear you. You Hello? wanted to speak, speak again? Gotcha. Okay. Uh -oh. Sorry, I can man. hear, I can hear Meredith. Okay. All right. So any further discussion from the commission? All right, then entertain a motion to accept the- Mr. Um, Chairman? Yes, sir. I, I'm sorry, I was somehow muted. Um, I, I did have, a, 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 I don't know if it's a question or, or just need a clarification. We are only approving the crossing tonight. That's it. The plan, yes. The plan, yes. not when it will be done. No. Right, right. they're gonna come back it sounds like maybe in the spring and we need to be notified, I don't know, at least a meeting before or 48 hours before, before construction. And obviously they're going to coordinate with natural heritage when they're going to do the crossing, but we're just approving the plan as written by Mr. Reynolds this evening. Okay. And Mr. Reynolds is a uh, civil engineer and that's a stamped plan. It is a stamped plan, uh, okay, right, thanks. Terry? You're going to stamp the plan for construction? Terry? Uh, Terry, you're mu muted. Yes, I can stamp the plan for construction. Okay, thank you. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so would someone like to make the motion? <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we accept the plan as written. Okay, do you have a second? second? Um, yeah, I'll second. With, but with, with the exception of paving, we've got to put the exception in. The plan shows paving, correct? Does it, Terry? Does the plan show paving right now? 
Yes, the plan shows the the culvert to be paved with concrete and then the remainder of bitterness. And how about how far up and down the road? It just shows the road as being asphalt. The whole road, though. Yeah. Okay, and that's just kind of because that's all the ultimate plan. And so you guys don't have to keep going back and changing the plans. I think we could have a caveat in there saying the paving will not occur until. Well, until we, until we hear it under an NOI. So Alex, what I'd recommend is you just add that exclusion. I'd also recommend that we specify 10 day notice before construction, allowing Meredith to get it on her calendar, hopefully on our calendar. What do you think? We accept that Alex? Yeah, is 10 day our standard? Is that? Yeah, we're, I'm fine with that. I'm gonna have to give my wetland uh, consultant plenty of notice. He's not gonna just show up in three days. So um, yeah. that's fine. I accept, Tom, I accept those. Those are, those are fine. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, I have another suggestion for Alex's motion, please. Sure. Uh, I'm a, a little concerned that the current plan does show the paving when that's not exactly what we're approving. So I'm going to propose that there be two plans, this revision and then the next revision with or without the paving so that there be clarity exactly what revision, uh, uh, to Terry, what revision are we talking to on the plan right now? The, the current plan shows paving. What is the revision number, please? We we already we already have a plan that shows it with asphalt too. I mean, there's Terry has both plans already. So no, no. My point is, I would like to make a distinction between plans. Oh, revision. the revision number. I understand. Right, the mind. revision number. I understand. So, okay, that's <laughs> what I I want. So the, what we're going to approve right now is revision X without paving. The future plan, which we're also no. approving, is. Why with paving? This plan is dated 423. Okay, so you need to to make a change in the plan, and so the so this will become if it's okay with the applicant because it's your plan. This will be the plan of uh, May 11 you, without you, paving. Uh, you're, are you asking me to revise the plan to take paving off? I want to approve. I want to make a motion tonight for approval of the plan without paving. That's what we're approving. Right. Are, I'm are okay. Also approving uh, going forward with a motion for another plan with paving, but they're sequential. You start with one, and then at the end of the entire project. Uh, paving can be integrated. That's are, are you asking me to revise this plan? That's up to the applicant. Jim, Alex's motion uh, included your desire to exclude paving from our approval tonight. And probably because it's not part of the enforcement, uh, any future paving would be considered a whole new ball game and a, and a new NOI. So we'll deal with that down the road. But we're but this plan has paving in it. We're excluding that though. We're we're, we're approving the stream crossing. You know, so I, my original motion to accept the plan as written is is basically backed off. We're we're accepting the stream crossing that's been proposed. We're not we're not tonight accepting or approving paving out there, and we're accepting the way that this crossing was designed. There's still coordination with natural heritage in terms of timing. And there'll be a 10 day notice to us so Meredith can check erosion controls and Mark indicated that it worked because he's got to get the other consultant on board anyway. So, um, and, and if it hasn't been seconded, I'll, I'll second Alex's motion. And I'm okay with Alex's motion. Okay. Thank Any you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Yeah, I, I, I don't really understand why you guys are doing it that way, but. Uh... You know, I mean, I'm I guess sorry, you don't want to, you don't want to approve paving the road. I mean, that's I guess that's what you're saying, right? No, that's correct. that's, that's uh, yeah. This is just time for the commission to, to discuss, and uh, yes, that's further down the road. Uh, Tom, I'll vote yes. Jim, yes. 
Uh, Carl. Yes. Alex. Yes. Cliff. Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, yeah, thanks uh, for item, joining us, Mark, Chris. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay you. Item B, 394 Northwest Road. I have a motion. Do I, I need a motion to continue until uh, 525 at uh, 630. Oops, wait a second. Yes. 394, I think. Is somebody here for 394? Um, I am, yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, oh. sorry. Okay. I, I didn't receive a plan from Levesque, but if Mr. Masek. Masek, thank you, is here and would like to talk about um, I, the enforcement. Are, are, am, am I uh, okay to proceed at this point in time? Yes, Let's sir, go right some... ahead. Okay. Um, thank you for asking. Yes, that was somewhat unclear to me. Yes, um, very unclear again, to many people. <laughs> um, if I may, I would like to share the screen if that would be all right. Um, yep, again, Peter I'm Mike sorry, my name is John Masick. I'm here from our Lebec Associates uh, representing oh, no. our client, Mr. Uh, Bill Berry, um, for a property uh, located on 394 Northwest Road. And hopefully you're seeing the uh, plan on my screen. Uh, is that correct? Yep. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, and I apologize. I would have sent it earlier before I left the office this evening had I known, but uh, I was unaware. Um, I, my apologies. Um, my understanding, and I, I'm coming to this uh, uh, just a bit late, but uh, I was asked by my uh, coworker Ryan Nelson, who uh, uh, flagged this site and also prepared this plan. Um, my understanding, and, and Meredith may certainly uh, step in if I'm speaking out of turn, but. Uh, I understand that the site was visited on or about the 16th of March uh, and uh, was observed that there was uh, unpermitted um, clearing and uh, bank disturbance going on at that time and, and an order was issued um, and, you know, to stop work. Um, and subsequently, as I said, uh, Mr. Nelson has uh, visited the site and flagged the uh, mean annual high water line of the uh, brook that uh, flows, uh, you know, it, it, and a meandering course uh, throughout the property there. Um, and there's also a, been a <clears throat> planting plan, a restoration plan for the disturbed areas uh, uh, shown on this plan, which I can speak to in some greater detail. Um, just by way of some background uh, for my own edification earlier this evening, I was, I was looking at the site on both Mass GIS Oliver and also with the uh, um, city of Westfield, uh, you know, assessors, uh, database and this site has uh, according to the assessors at least has had a uh, residence on it since at least 1850 so this is certainly not new construction um, you know the house is well over 150 years old at this point and likely has been in a uh, you know this this yard or, or, or lawn area if you will has likely been maintained for the vast majority of that time certainly prior to the uh, inception of the Rivers Act but um, not to diminish or, or take away from what may have occurred as far as the violation goes, but uh, it certainly has been maintained in, in a similar fashion for likely quite a, a long period of time. Um, getting back to the uh, enforcement order, um, Mr. Nelson, let me zoom in a bit. It might be a bit easier to see, um, and I can certainly view any other portion of the plan that the commission members would like, but um, we are proposing that there be a five foot no mow uh, buffer zone from the uh, top of bank uh, extending westerly towards the uh, northwest road side of the property. Um, we're also proposing a fairly significant number of plantings um, on the site. Uh, again, in that same five foot buffer zone, um, we are proposing a total of, I believe, 35 plantings, uh, 12 of them being trees, uh, nine red maples, three, excuse me, uh, three red maples and nine dogwoods and uh, 23 uh, berry, uh, you know, service berry, high bush blueberry, and some spice bush, uh, you know, interspersed uh, along that uh, area. And as called out in the plan, uh, the intent is to uh, maintain the remainder of the uh, site uh, outside of that five foot uh, planted, no disturbed uh, buffer zone uh, in, in the uh, state that it currently is in. So that's a brief overview of uh, what has occurred and uh, what we are proposing as far as uh, remediation here. So, 
Uh, questions from the commission? I guess I had a quick question. How do we come upon the five foot um, uh, area around the river? That seems like an awfully narrow um, range around that river to help prevent erosion and whatnot. Um, I, I think the short answer is that currently it is essentially zero. Um, you know, and I think this, especially with the established plantings and a fairly regular, uh, you know, pattern, uh, there would be no incentive to, to disturb, uh, you know, with anywhere closer to that. But uh, I, I can't say that there was any hard and fast, uh, you know, thought behind that other than the fact that it is, uh, you know, it, it's, it's establishing a, an, a definitive uh, distance and, and allows for, you know, the plantings as, as shown on, you know, on our <clears throat> plan here. Um, but the, uh, the five foot is, is you know, uh, I'm not sure that there was any, you know, significant calculus to that number. Right, so John, in the past, they've just been cutting the lawn right up to the river bank. Is that, that what is you're... my understanding? And I, I've taken a look at uh, various, uh, you know, looked at the Google timeline, and it's it's been, you know, as far back as you know, I can, you know, in, in short uh, order, look at the aerial photography available. It's it's been that way for you know, likely maybe a hundred plus years. Um, we don't have aerial photography to go back far enough to see that, but it, I'm, I'm guessing, and from what Mr. Nelson, who's been to the site, uh, and from what our survey crew has established, uh, you know, it, it's it's been that way for, for quite a long period of time. Yes, John, have you been to the site? I have not, no, I was sort of pressed into duty uh, <laughs> earlier this afternoon uh, when, when uh, Mr. Nelson became unavailable, but uh, I, I can't say that I've seen the site now. What, what brought this to our attention? It was a number of trees being cut or vegetation being cut, or if it was lawn, what, what happened different? My understanding and Meredith can certainly, uh, you know, fill in the blanks, but I was told by, by Ryan Nelson that it, it, the client was uh, brush hogging a significant area of multi-flora rows right adjacent to the uh, uh, stream bank, so. Yes. Yeah, so to clarify, thanks, John. And sorry, I didn't recognize you. I didn't realize you were from RLA at first. Um, so my apologies for that. So yeah, this was all, yeah, it was a shrubs and it's been grubbed and shares in a minute. If, if, um, John can stop, stop, stop sharing the screen for a sec, but I'd like to go back to this plan. But yeah, so it, it hasn't been lawn in quite a long time, I'd say, because the house was vacated and kind of left. I mean, it's not um, it's not livable right now. And the folks that bought it are rehabbing it and um, they're doing a, a really nice job with that, but they also want to maintain the property. And some of the inner 200 or outer 200 riverfront area it did look like that was lawn, but not up to the river's edge. And let me just uh, show you guys some photos. I mean, I think the property owner would like to maintain, I think they would like a lawn. They like looking out at the river. It's really beautiful. Um, but I think we're gonna have to come up with some sort of compromise. Hold on one sec, let me just, um, let me see. Especially, yeah, like we might need to add some seed, especially because it was grubbed. So there's a lot of bare soil next to the stream. I mean, it didn't look like it was going to run off, luckily. Um, hang on. No, I'll go back over here. Okay. So this, can you guys see the photo? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, can, can you make a little uh, larger? Mm, yes. Maximize it a little bit. Uh, there you can really see the ground. Yeah. Disturbed. Wow, they really but are right in all fairness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me scroll through. You'll see. So they're right on the river. In all fairness, they did leave a lot of um, native shrubs and trees along the bank. And that was good. Hold on. Let me go back. Ah, oh, why is it doing that? Stop. Oh, come on. 
I can't scroll through. Hold on one second. Okay, let me see if this works. Well, I don't know why I'm not being able to scroll through the photos. Are they changing now for you folks or no? No. No, no. okay. Do this again. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not able to. Oh, here we go. Is that working? Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is actually there. I guess an existing um, garage, and it the property slopes down, and the river's over here. And they basically cleared everything up oh. to the bank. In all fairness, it, this was. I mean, I think. Oops. Um. In some areas, it was maintained lawn. In other areas, it, it seemed like it was really overgrown. Like, I think there was a lot of multi-floor rows in here that was torn out. Um, so when we did a site visit the other day, we were talking to the homeowner. And, you know, he was kind of pushing. He wants to be able to see the river. I was saying, we don't want you mowing up to the wetland out of the river's edge. And I think Ryan was in the middle and came up with five feet of no mow zone and plantings. Um, I think I'd be more comfortable with 10 feet, but it's up to the commission, I guess. They also, he also was saying that this was giant hogweed, which I'm not, Sure, he said he cleared it all because it was a poisonous plant, which... If it is hogweed, it is poisonous. So. Yeah, yeah, I just wasn't sure. I know there's a hogweed lookalike, but this does look like hogweed, so I... And hogweed gets very, very tall and does cause a terrible rash. I haven't really seen it around um, Massachusetts, but I know it, it is it, starting. It's, it's been in the area. Uh, yeah. especially a couple of years ago. Uh, I know uh, Board of Health was pe sending people out to uh, cut it, bag it, um, and just, you know, dispose of appropriately. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe it. So, you know, the river to 10 feet doesn't seem like that big of a compromise to me because they, let me see if I have a picture of the whole yard, uh, the more manicured uh, I don't have a picture of the more manicured lawn but there's sort of a if you they're like you walk out the back porch and then they have a, like a stone wall garden area and then it goes down and there's um I don't know maybe that's on the plan actually John is that do you mind sharing the plan again I would be happy to thank you um there's there's definitely an area that's in the 200 foot riverfront area. Um, yeah, see where on the plan it says existing lawn area predates Rivers Protection Act. Well, they have the arrow going both ways and I was thinking it just kind of follows the topography um, where the where the trees where the trees they've located are. So beyond the I yeah. see the hundred foot line up in the top left. So I'm just going to guess where the 50 is. Kind of, I'm surprised Levesque didn't put 50 knowing that we like it. He didn't put this on the map. Mention that to Ryan for me, John. I will do I, absolutely that first thing in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Probably didn't put it yeah no you should send him a text right now an email tonight yeah uh, <laughs> if we stay with a 50 foot instead of five foot where would this shrub line be it, it would be half the yard easily but, yeah right yeah i mean that the house would be in the 50. well no i don't agree with that if that's oh, well yeah, it's, maybe, clo maybe, it's close it would it would be, uh, I don't know that the house would be within it, but it would be certainly right up to the back of the house. If that's five foot, uh, you know, 10 yeah. times that will take you past that retaining wall, certainly. 
um, if not into the house, certainly right up to it. I, I think I was, they, sorry. Okay, I, I think they put the 100 on there because it's a riverfront yes. and not a BVW. That is the other thought that comes to mind. There's no, there's no uh, associated BVW uh, on yeah. this site at least. Same, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I would, I, I'm, when I was out there, I thought 10 feet probably would be a good compromise concerning what he wants to do. I mean, five feet wide is kind of narrow if you're going to put trees in there. Uh, their canopies are going to be wider than the five foot buffer that, that they've got. Um, you know, I understand the landowner wants to look at the river, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's grubbed all the way down to the top of the bank right now. Um, but the, the bank itself is armored quite a bit with large boulders and, and concrete slabs. Um, so we didn't see any, any really erosion except in one spot. Um, but I think 10 feet would be better than the five feet that they're, they're asking. Yeah, I'd feel much more comfortable with that as well. And then the other thing we're going to want to have them specify if we would like this updated to show a 10 foot no mow is that the, um, the homeowner wanted to weed whack. And I think he wanted to mow even in the five to 10 foot zone. I don't know. We just are going to have to specify if we want this mowed or not. I was thinking no, but he, I think he wants it kind of manicured because he wants to see the river, but I, I'm not I, sure. I remember him saying he'd like to weed whack it down to a foot that gets higher than a foot. Yeah. Most golden rods grow. I mean, they can grow up to five feet. Yeah. Which I don't know. I do like this planting plan. I think that the, sh additional shrubs will be nice along the riverbank there to stabilize it. Um, but I think we have to decide about the mowing or the wee whacking up to one foot height or three feet or whatever, or in the off season, you know, when bees and birds and such aren't using the goldenrod and the flowering things, there was a lot of nice native stuff actually growing. I was surprised. Um, just or be, or there was some multi-floor rows coming up, but there was quite a few golden rods and violets and different things that would be fine growing there. Um, so I don't know. Do we we probably need to move on? Right. But maybe Lebec can update this with our comments, or do you guys want to chime in and tell them exactly what we want to see? I think now is our chance to protect this <clears throat> this piece of property, this this resource area, and and I'm I, I'm being silly. I know we can't come back fifty feet, but um, for him to be weed whacking on both sides mm -hmm. of these shrubs, you know, why bother? You know, why don't you just let them keep cutting the lawn right up to the edge of the of the water? And the thing is, it's not lawn. It hasn't been lawn for years because it was, un they did mow it occasionally, I think, but it was left unmaintained and natural vegetation has um, yeah. receded. And that's what's coming up now. So I think maybe we just agree on, I mean, 10 feet isn't that much. And you can still hear the river. You still know it's there. Why do you have to look at it? I don't know. Mm. Just my opinion. And why do we have to follow the course of the river? I mean, are there are there areas where we could maybe we could restore that that what looks to, to me to be the northeast corner, that little part that kind of you know square it off a little bit, let that go native. This is an enforcement order, correct? This is an enforcement order, and this is a restoration plan that we will eventually need to approve. No, not, nobody called us and said, hey, we'd like to mow up to the river. 
So we've issued an enforcement and now we're asking them to restore it. Is, is uh, to, to the chair, is there yes. any reason we have to make a decision tonight? And why can we have the app of the owner um, have somebody come in with a restoration plan that's appropriate for the environment with the proper native plantings? That's um, what this is. Th this is it? Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is the restoration plan. Oh boy. I think we could just say, you, you, you need to go back to the drawing board. We like the shrubs. We need to see some seating. We need to see more of the area protected and we're going to continue this to the next meeting because yeah. I agree because I don't feel on. like there's a consensus here. Yeah, it's quarter and nine. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't think this was the final restoration plan. I just thought, yeah. oh, okay, I'm sorry, my misunderstanding. I agree that we, I don't think we should accept anything tonight. Go back to the drawing board. Uh, also stabilize the bank some more coming in, get rid of that uh, exposed earth and you know, the, we, I'm sure there can be a good compromise between aesthetics, enjoying the, the flowing uh, brook and protecting the environment. But I don't, from what I'm seeing in this plan, I don't think it's doing it, all that mm -hmm. stuff. I think Ryan could, could take a harder look at it also. Mr. Chairman, I'm ready to continue this when you're ready for a motion. Mm -hmm. well, I just want to make sure that John, is John still here with us? I am. Um, I, okay. I, Certainly, get, I can appreciate the commission's view, and, and I will okay. share your findings uh, with Mr. Nelson. Okay. okay, again, the five foot doesn't seem to cut it. Understood. Okay. All right. Sure. Thank you very much for your understanding. Thank you. Yes, no worries. I appreciate Mr. your time. Okay, Mr. All Chair. Right. Mr. Yes, Chair, sir. can we just ask that the? I think we we already approved the propane tank, but can they just drop that dot on this plan too, just so we know where it is? Right. We need yeah. We need that on the plan too, John. Okay, I, I was unaware We're, of that. So there's a propane yeah. tank on site you'd like shown. I think yeah. we emergency approved it to go in close to the house, yeah. but it would just it would make sense just to show it on the plan on the restoration plan so we know where Un it is. Understood. Not a problem. Yeah, um, we, we mentioned that at the site visit last week. So yeah, yeah and they were going back and forth on yeah okay. that needs to be shown on there. Yeah. No Mr. Worries. Chairman, one more yes, thing. Um, uh, with somebody moving in there, I doubt there's uh, sewers out there. So there's going to have to be a couple of perk tests done. Uh, we're going to need to see where they're going to put the fields for primary and secondary. That, that hasn't been mentioned to us at all. So maybe, we, we, is it listed? Maybe, is it on city there? I mean, I don't know. It might be on city sewer and water. I there, there's uh, if I can share the plan once again if it's not too uh, please yeah sure it, it does we do have the existing septic system uh, called out the you know not the features but the location shown on the plan if you'll bear okay. with just one second it's shown to the uh, northwest uh, uh, of the okay. existing house here septic area I assume okay. there's probably a vent. So. Meredith, I don't remember them mentioning moving or making a new septic system I, when we were out there. No, they would probably, if it didn't pass Title V, they would probably just rehab where it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then unless it's being sold, there there would be no need to you know do a, a, a Title V inspection. So yeah, so when this person purchased, it was recently purchased. So it must have passed Title V. Is that uh, I'd be speaking out of turn. I, if, 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 you know, at, at the time of sale, it, it would have had to have passed. Yes, unless it's a transfer of convenience. But um, so I'm assuming that what, what's here passed or I'm, I'm not aware of any any deficiencies. Let's put it that way. Well, okay. Meredith. All right. Yep. Oh, or, or if it was paid cash. Oh, it, cash. It, it, you it, don't it, have to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's, the bank, it's the banks that require that. Just so you know. True. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I, I didn't know, and that is okay. full information. Okay. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like they're doing anything with the septic. Not to my knowledge. Right okay. Now. Thank okay. you. Thank you for that. Thank you. All right. Strong. All right, Tom. I'll, I'll let you take your Thanks motion, your Tom. Tom. Thank you. I'll make a motion that we continue this matter until our next meeting, May twenty fifth. Right, do you have a second? Second uh, that. Okay. Uh, all in favor. 
Uh, Jim. Yep. Cliff. Yes. Carl. Yes. Tom. Yes. Alex. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Very IMD, much. 1760 Mountain Road. Did I just say one thing though? That looked uh, like a sorry, luxury. That looked like a luxury Mark, landscaping please, plan, not no. a restoration plan. Having sure. that's all I wanted to say. Uh, good night, Mark. Thank you. Um, Don't uh, I have another? Uh, I have another please, issue. That's you're out of order. Right Stop. Yes. Sir, do I have another thing on the agenda after or no? No, you don't. Are you sure, Meredith? We put oh, his, minute. yeah, but it, not right now. We're talking about 69 Neck Road in discussion after we're done with the enforcements. Uh, All right, thank you. Okay, we'll come back you. to you. Okay. Um, and this one is uh, clearing vegetation, 100 foot buffer zone to BVW and Chapin Pond, which is off of East Mountain Road. Uh, Meredith and I were out there last week and they cleared just about to the pond. They left some um, skunk cabbage behind. <laughs> that was about it. Uh, she's got some pictures to show you, then we'll discuss it. Um, okay, here we go. One second. <sighs> okay, can you guys see the photos? Uh, they're a little small, but yeah, enlarge it. I don't seem to. Uh, well, there you go. That's too much. Yeah. Ah, uh, it doesn't like it when I. I can't scroll and enlarge. So let me get to the, so there's a home, it's a new homeowner. I originally sent the letter to the previous homeowner, so it took a while for us to get, hold on, let me get, okay. Existing home, there's a, they have an in-ground pool. They cleared up to the wetland edge and actually beyond the 100 foot buffer zone, pushed a bunch of sh the, understory up actually that's not even on their property and um the wetland edge was fairly obvious so that's the story we measured 100 feet out for them and 50 feet they have plenty of room in their yard to not need to go anywhere near the 100 foot buffer zone um they did leave the trees so that was good this was not done by them, but there were some pallets put in the pond. Um, looked like, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, some leaf clippings. Looked like somebody was gonna cut down the tree, decided not to. This is what it, you could see the, it was cleared. And then I think the understory looked more like this. Um, prior to clearing. That, that's on the neighboring property. Sorry, know. yeah. Yes, that's on the neighboring property. I just took a picture to show you what it probably looked like. You know, it was a pretty naturalized buffer. Even though there are some invasives. Um, but not as many trees. Would you agree with that, Meredith? Or did they take the stumps out? It looked... I, I don't think they took down trees. And then perhaps... Um, I believe it was the daughter of the owner that was going to attend. I don't know if she's here. I think Gabrielle or Gabby, if she's here, there was a phone number. I didn't know who that was, but if she's not, that's fine. I don't think trees were taken down. Um, David, did you, I, I didn't see, it wasn't it like, look it like it dug holes. It was just, they had a little uh, bobcat out there and they were going back and forth grubbing and, so it needs a restoration plan and they need erosion controls. I, I don't know what happened after the rain. We were on out there on Friday. Friday. When did, it looked like, it didn't look like any erosion had occurred. So that was positive, but. Um. Okay, so let's move on. I think 
obviously an enforcement order is required. Um, they need to ins install some type of uh, erosion control uh, yep. at the edge and then submit a, a, submit a restoration plan. Um, I mean, it's just bare from the, the edge all the way back up mm -hmm. to 100 foot and beyond that. So, um, and we, we marked, we put some markers in there to show where the 50 foot line was and also the 100 foot line. So again, the daughter seemed to understand, you know, what we were talking about and, and uh, our concerns about the property. So, um, you know, so I guess we need a motion for the enforcement order. So moved. I will second that. Okay. Um, and, and I guess my, my, my motion includes all the things Meredith knows to do, you know, set a date, uh, tell them to put up the, the ero er erosion controls. Unless you want me to be more specific, Mr. Chairman. No, I think, uh, Colleen, do these have to be read into the minutes or you can figure them out from, from our discussion? Well, that depends on Meredith. What do you want? Do you want them to read them into the minutes or do you want me to infer from what's in the minutes? I mean, we can just say we're going to issue an enforcement order with the conditions that erosion controls are going to be installed. We're going to get a restoration <laughs> and by maybe that's, I should say the end of June. Yeah, that's the only caveat. When, when do you want this all by? We, I think, I think I maybe was a little too heavy handed. I first wrote June 8th, we would have the plan by, but um, maybe that's a month away. Yeah, that's right. a whole month. Okay. And then we would, it, we would discuss it at our June 8th meeting, the plan, and then it would be implemented two weeks later. Okay. Do you think that's reasonable guys? Yes. Okay. All right, so is that, is, that a, is that in your proposal, your motion? Yes, that, right. that would okay. be my motion. All right. Thank All you. set, Colleen. Okay, who have a second? I'll second. And any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Cliff? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jim? Yep. Alex? Yes. Carl? Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. Thank you. Item six, discussion, emergency certification to Coa Country Club, uh, need a motion to continue. So move. Oh. Second? Se second. Okay, all in favor, Cliff? Yes. Tom? Yep. Jim? Yep. Carl? Yes. Alex? Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. Okay, item B, 69 Neck Road. Request to confirm farming exemption. Uh, Mr. Dupuy. Yes, sir. Okay. You want to tell us what you'd like to do out there? Uh, well, uh, you know, I was trying to verify these exemptions. You know, there's a lot of exemptions that go with agriculture. And, uh, you know, for starters, I was, there's a couple trees right there by the road that have fallen basically. Um, that is an existing field that's been, you know, to my knowledge, used multiple times in the last five and 10 year periods. You know, I don't, you know, I can't say how far it goes back, but that's what's been told to me. So basically the three trees there were going to come down and then uh, it was going to get uh, some straw or some hay planted there this season <sighs> in that field. Uh, to help develop the, the field. Uh, and then, uh, you know, eventually different crops would be rotated in or out. Um, you know, we, I do some hemp there, uh, but uh, Chip Kilbasa, he used to, before I took the fields, he tended to these fields and a lot of the local fields in the area for many, many years. And uh, just as a way to stabilize the uh, fields, well, I'm not planting hemp. I let him plant some cover crops and then he's able to harvest those uh, come springtime 
for his needs and then I can plant my hemp there. So Mm -hmm. we're basically just looking to take these trees down or I am anyways. Um, I got permission from the landowners, you know, they're as long as it's approved. And then uh, this would become a, you know, another field like the fields near it. Okay. uh, I guess one question. Uh, This has been in agriculture as far as some type of crop that was being sold within the last five years? Yes. Okay. Then as far as I know, that would satisfy as an exemption. Is that correct, Colin? Uh, 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 Meredith? Yes, I think, I, and I did talk to Mr. Kolbasa about the, these fields back there. There's quite a number of fields. It's um, off of Neck Road and the Delancey Road is back there. I don't know if you guys know it's behind the um, fault place. But I think this was, this is an agricultural field that most likely was farmed in the last five years. So that's a really important part of the exemption. And then I asked Mr. Kobasso, well, why are these trees there if you were hanging it? And he said that the landowner didn't want him to take them down. So if Mr. Dupuy has gotten permission from the landowner to take down the trees, um, it, I think it would be exempt because this was a commercially used farm field in the past five years and Mr. Dupuy is gonna be commercially using it. Is that right, okay. Mark? Yes, yep. Okay, so I, I, and the, the resource area to clarify for everybody is the floodplain, bordering land subject to flooding. And what's really important in that is that we couldn't, I don't think clearing in the 10 year floodplain would be exempt, but the hundred year, which this field, this particular field is in, I think I do believe it's exempt too. Um, Meredith? Meredith? Yeah. Hey, one one question. I know last, last week it came up with uh, uh, a field and I believe you said a field, not a parcel, had to be like I know Al, I think it was Alex brought up if a if a crop was in one field and it wasn't wasn't harvested within five years in in a different oh, you said you're mute. I I understand it as the whole parcel you know as long as part of the parcel is is uh is used then the whole parcel would be no, exactly. that's not how, no. So, it, so like, like for instance, where all the trees are, those trees weren't harvested or, or anything. So that makes that not exempt. What, you mean you're talking about the three trees in the field? Oh, I'm talking about where, uh, where was hay, yes. The rest of the field where there's trees or there's there's other stuff that you know the uh, so the whole field was was used from from the whole border meredith do you have the field map that you can pull up that shows the usda field map of the property that numbers uh, them that you hold on i think so so to answer your question though yes. partially um from what i understand no the whole property isn't just a big agricultural field now, you know, it's a, it's a 65 acre part property and it reaches all the way down to the Westfield river. Um, part of the back parcel, the landowners donated to the city to when they installed the waste treatment plant, they needed a leach field from what I believe back there. Um, there's like a gate when you go past toward the waste treatment plant, you'll see they had to give that to the city to meet the leach field requirements. But, um, you can go, you know, that you can square off, you can, you can, you know, you can uh, do borders around it to access with equipment, but you can't just, you know, strip mine down to the edge of the river or into the banks. Um, you know, it's, I think you'd have to really look at the property as a whole, because it's, it is a large property. So, but if you'll zoom in, Meredith. Oh, I was- Meredith, I was just trying to get clarification just so I know. You know what I mean? Um, you know, if you guys think it, w- it was it was used, that's fine. You know what I mean? I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. That's all. So what are we looking at here? Which field are we talking about? 
I, I, it's pretty zoomed out for me. I don't know if it's maybe my phone or I don't get a better view at what you guys are looking at. Field number seven. I don't know which one. I think Mark went away. I don't know about you folks, but I can, I have every, every participant is fading in and out at various yeah. times. Must be time I, to go home. Must sorry about that. Out. No, am I back again? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you are. yeah. Okay. I, I apologize. You know, I, you know, I'll give you guys a lot of credit. You guys should take a break during these things. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff in a row for anybody. Okay. I got yep. it. It's working. We're talking about field number seven. That was, Right okay. Unfortunately, it took so long for me to convey that. That's what okay. we're talking okay. about. Yeah, we're talking about seven. There's three trees there. And I think maybe what Cliff was trying to get at is like this area with the conveyor belt and all that, that's not farming. So you can't just go and start clearing all those. You can't just say, oh, we're using the conveyor belt for farming and then put a pig farm there. I don't think that would be an exemption. But this is a no, hay field. Mer Mer no, Meredith, I was just asking, like, if you look at it, you can see, like, half the lot has those three trees, right? Half of the acres. And yeah. the other half, you can clearly see that it was, it was, it was, it looks like it was, you know, harvested or farmed or whatever. So all I was saying was, I have no problem with this at all. I mean, you know, being all, all exempt. I'm just saying, I just want to make sure we are all on the same page that only half the lot that was being farmed isn't exempt. And the other half with the trees that, that wasn't paid, or if it wasn't because he couldn't go around the trees, you know what I mean? Then that's not exempt. You know what I mean? I'm just going by what you, what you said last, you know, what you were talking about last week. What I was talking about. Okay. I can clarify what I was talking about last week, but this is a, farm this is a hay field with some trees in the middle so they uh, hate around the they hate around the trees they hate around the trees oh yeah the land the landlord that's wasn't the landlord that's wasn't in big favor of clearing the trees he liked them and then he he wants me to i'm not actually clearing all the trees out of the field there's two in the back back corner that he wanted me to leave those two big ones there and he said just try to leave those so i'm gonna leave those ones um, cause I just don't think it'll really make a difference. You oh, know, no, so. no, Mark, don't worry about it. I, I'm, I agree with it. I think. Thank you though. I appreciate fine. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I think we've established that it is a farm field and is it, a, it is an exempt activity to take the three trees. Yep. Um, my concern is, is a question of clearing a hundred feet around another farm field. Uh, that seems to be rather extreme. Uh, I know you can you can clear a little boundary, you know, for equipment around a farm field, but a hundred feet that's that's a big distance to clear, especially down in in that uh, flood area. So, Mark, are you asking to do that? Or is that part of this? Um, you know, originally the plan, and you'll see that the field is actually ex I I put it through. Um, again, you can't. Like back to what Meredith said, and you guys were saying, where not any part of the, the property is just a field. Um, to get a field, it has to be part of your farm number and whatever they call this. It has a different number one, two, two three, four, five, six, seven. But there's actually the main uh, telephone easement that goes through there. And there's just like they've been whittling it away at it now to keep the trees out of there. And there's just this little sliver in between the field and that. And my plan was actually just to square the field, how it's, if you look at it right now, you'll see, and just, there's like this little strip. And I think long-term it would, it's really, I mean, that's the main transmission line for the entire city. And, uh, you know, it's, it really wouldn't be bad to take that out. Um, and to, and then, you know, I don't think I need a hundred feet. I would just was telling when I said a hundred feet, I'm just trying to tell you guys what I believe the exemption is because that's, clearly what it says is a hundred feet, but I mean, my tractor is probably 20 feet wide and uh, you know, it just, it does actually consume the way Mr. Uh, Kilbasa plants, he plants hay and he, he has 
done an excellent job of, you know, maintaining corner to corner and planting every single inch of the field with, with hay or straw. And the way you do hemp, you need to be able to access on all sides. So now I have this issue where I have to make an access around my crops and it, it really uh, narrows with the way that the field isn't square and it, it kind of rounds the corner, um, you know, squaring it off and then making just a little, you know, I don't even think it would be 30 feet maybe, but you know, in the, and honestly, none of this is probably going to happen until next spring anyways. Cause I, you know, I'm just so far behind with anything, but you know, there's just, there's a lot of exemptions for these properties. And another one for instance is, is you can withdraw from the river, you know, and I don't know, you know, I mean, I don't know. I get, from what I read, you can withdraw a lot of water from the river. You can just, that's just what you can do. It's just like withdrawing it from the ground. Um, so I don't know what that entails when you encroach through a mm -hmm. wetland buffer to do it. Um, you know, if you're just running a hose, if that's, you know, I don't even know if I need to do that, but you know, when I send you guys emails, I'm, you know, I mean, Maybe I don't have the right to ask you guys these kind of questions, but I, I'm looking to know the answers. That's why I'm asking you guys. And, uh, you know, I do appreciate your time because I know even for yourselves, navigating all these different sections is, is you know, it's complex. You know, it really is. So um, I think for right now, we could just hold off on that. But I, I just would like some clarification on, uh, you know, future uh exempt work mark i'm all for holding off on it for this evening and, and it sounds like we're getting ready to approve you taking those three trees but uh this this is something for another day this this is going to require an rda a request for determination of applicability because what you're doing with that 100 feet is you're you're creating more field you're creating more uh production land um, um, so well, I, let's, let's just, like yeah, you say, you're no, not, gonna, you're not ready to rock and roll. Let's, let's leave that for another night. Well, no, I, I want to do is what, what the rules say, you know what I mean? And I, I understand you guys, Meredith, Meredith is aggressive about protecting every tree in this town, you know, and I am just as aggressive about my trees too. You know, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a David versus Goliath type scenario here. You know what I mean? It's a, you know, but I'm not looking to do anything unreasonable, you know, in a rush, but I just would like the commission to take notice to what the rules actually are, you know, and not just, you know, when I ask, say, oh, submit this because, you know, the rules are there and they're spelled out pretty clearly for this scenario. So, I mean, I don't want to yeah. stir the pot for myself. I don't have issues. And I, I just think you're wrong when you say I'm creating more field. I don't know how that plays down the road. If, if a hundred feet becomes field eventually, or if you can use field and then you get to clear another hundred feet, if that's maybe what, what you guys are worried about. But uh, I mean, if it is, that's, that's what the rules are. Right. I yeah. mean, that's why they write all these things. No, I wondered the same thing. When does it stop? You know, like you just said, yeah, no, and I mean, I, next year you come back for another hundred feet. It's crazy, but please let's do that another night. I, yeah, no, I'm not looking to get in there. That's it. I just, I appreciate you guys looking into it, approving the three going forward. We'll, we'll talk about it before I do it. Cause I don't, I can't, I can't create issues on this property. Uh, I will not, I promise the landlords I wouldn't. So it's not worth it to me, you know? All right. So, so I have to take a motion to accept this uh, the first field as exempt because it's been within agriculture. Uh, commercial agriculture within the last five years. And maybe maybe I'll, I'll make that motion and I'll include the fact that the, the applicant should provide some kind of written permission from the landowner before he chops these trees. Okay, that's your motion? That's my motion. Okay, we have a second? I, I will second that. Any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor, Tom? I'll vote yes. Carl? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Jim? Yes. Alex? Yes. I'll vote yes. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Mark, and, and, and good luck. Thank you all. Good night. 
Okay, item C, uh, 88 Furrow Town Road. Potential violation of buffer zone. Uh, again. Um, okay, this was, we got a call about clearing in the buffer zone and poor Estelle had to wait all night um, and she did. I saw her here at 6.30. So we did visit the site. Um, I can show you guys some photos. Uh, there was a small isolated wetland, I think isolated, that was clear to the edge. And then there potentially is a wetland adjacent to where they cleared. It was wet, but I didn't dig in there. You know, I didn't do a delineation, so I can't really say. But um, I'll show you some photos. I don't know if it still wants to talk about the project or what happened. We'll see if we have time. Okay, let me get the photos. Um, okay, here we go. Ah, sorry. Okay. So this is at the end of Foro Town Road. It's right where the sportsman club starts and Estelle's property is right adjacent to it. So they have an existing home, barn garage thing. And then I guess it was a bunch of sumacs and kind of overgrown. So was my, oh, this is the little isolated thing. Oh, and there is an, an old well in there. Um, so it's kind of like a hillside seep where they had probably put in a well hundred years ago, but they kind of, but then water was coming out and they were kind of blocking it with some logs. No, the, the, the logs were there, there when the tree fell down. Oh, okay. So clearly a wetland because it's skunk cabbage. Um, wasn't sure if it was BBW because <laughs> There was an, an obvious stream, um, and this is a well, the old well, oops, old well. Big tree fell down on there. Um, and then this is looking out. I don't, why was it wet in that area, Estelle? Was that groundwater, or are you guys watering? The rain, it, the, I think the way it was pitched. Okay. It had nowhere to go. Yeah, okay. So they, there. so I didn't, I should have had a GI, oh shoot. So on the, sorry, let me go back one more. Um, I, I should pull up a map, it would be more helpful. But on the, it's just the east side of the house over here where it drops down. Oh yeah, so there was a marginal area, you know, right below where the clearing happened. So I don't know. Feel like we might need a delineation to assess whether this is in the, our jurisdiction. I mean, the isolated wetland would be in our jurisdiction. Um, I don't know. I'm losing steam. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so the question is whether we need a delineation on this or not. I don't know how expensive delineations are, but I I'm not, also don't think I can make a decision without one. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think the next step is to get a delineation to figure out where we have jurisdiction and where we don't. Okay, Still I can give, sorry, Estelle, some names. Sorry, sorry, who, I didn't mean to interrupt, David. No, go ahead. Oh, no, we can provide some names some a list of folks and some are cheaper than others so i can help her what so what's our vehicle an emergency i mean a uh, enforcement order that's that what gives easy. us the easiest i think right or you can, yeah that or you could just ask her to get a delineation or or the a friendly enforcement order yeah Get a delineation, and if it is in our jurisdiction, we need a restoration plan. 
or right. some agreement of what is going to be restored and right. made into lawn. Okay. <clears throat> I already had the grass planted. We've had the uh, most of it um, made ready for a lawn. The other part we were planning to do um, fruit trees and fruit bushes and pretty much it. Okay. okay. Well, our, our concern is you know, whether we have any jurisdiction or not, and that needs to be determined by a, a delineation where, you know, a consultant or an expert comes out and, and decides where the wetland is. And then once we know that, then we can proceed uh, with any with our jurisdiction, if we have jurisdiction, and perhaps the delineation will show that we don't have any jurisdiction, you know, it, whatever. But uh, we certainly have jurisdiction over this, this, the small isolated wetland up near that well. I believe it is because of the well. Right, that's true. But it is a, an isolated wetland. Uh, so we do have jurisdiction over that under the local ordinance, so. So is, is it the will the commission to proceed with an enforcement order asking for a delineation? Yeah, I'm all for a friendly enforcement order. Okay. Uh, everyone be else? my vote as well. Okay. So you want to make that motion, Tom? Yep. Uh, regarding 88 Furrow Town Road, I'm going to make a motion that we issue an enforcement order asking the property owner to. Uh, provide a delineation of the disturbed area. Okay. Okay, a second. Second that. Any further discussion? Okay. Well, uh, well uh, in favor now, Tom? I'll vote yes. Jim? Yep. Carl? Yes. Alex? Yes. And Cliff? Yes. Your, your photos keep moving around the screen. It's hard to keep track of where you are. You know? I know. <laughs> like like tic-tac-toe. Okay, thank you. Uh, yep. So uh, Estelle Meredith will be in contact with you. Okay. Okay. Uh, yep. Thank you for your, for your patience. All right. Okay. Okay, thank okay, you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. Uh, item seven, other items. Uh, minutes are not ready, so we'll go on to number eight. Uh, regulations and, and procedures. Uh, we have, do we have anything here, uh, uh, Meredith? I don't know if you want to talk about appropriate Zoom behavior now or another time, but... Um, appropriate what? Zoom behavior from, I think we did the best that we could tonight, but that was very... I know, it was just fucking, yep. Well, I have nothing else. Okay. Yeah, Ashley, good time to thank Peter for intervening when he did. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you, Peter. Okay, item B, wetlands ordinance update. Uh, it's, I mean, it's 9.23 now. I don't know if we have time to discuss this or not. Uh, I, I sent, I, sorry, yeah, I sent the word doc to folks. I don't know, we can, I think next meeting, I don't, I will be a little shorter, knock on wood. I think we cleared out our RDAs. Next meeting, we have a new notice of intent And just the enforcement stuff. So maybe we could discuss yeah. the ordinance. I don't know. If it'll, it'll be two new notices of intent. Remember the one that came in today? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Well, keep looking at the ordinance, I guess. I sent out the Word document and let's just, we got to make sure we can't let the summer go by without updating it. Um, okay. I really think we should have a deadline for ourselves and, and again, let's not make it complicated, but we just, you know, 50 foot golden rule in there. Um, you know, it has all the definitions of a swamp and a marsh and a da da da. It's like, that's not relevant. Like a BBW is a BBW regardless of what is growing there. I just get, I mean, when, when plants are listed in the regulations, it just makes it not as to me, it's like, I don't know. Okay. Not as we'll work strange. on it. Okay. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. I, I just, Meredith, I respect what you're saying, and I know you're frustrated. We just can't talk about it. It's too late. <laughs> uh oh. I'm, you know, I, but I, I understand. I'm more what frustrated you're with this evening. I, I not frustrated with the ordinance, and we think I'm so glad we have an ordinance. I'm frustrated yeah. with how it was treated tonight. So let's just. Uh, As am I. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, ridiculous. And this has been going on. I just have to say for the record, I've been harassed via email and in other meetings. I sent a note out and it's just, I'm, I'm really, I'm so, I've never been so disrespected and it's, it's appalling. And I don't. It was, it was incredibly no, disrespectful. Chris made an absolute fool of himself in a, in a public meeting. It's out there in the airwaves. Um, it's on public record now. If there's ever need to take it further and go to the police, it's actually out there now. Uh, that he acted that way and he acted inappropriately towards another member of the public who was here trying to talk about our own project. So, um, so it was disgusting behavior. And I will say the other member of the public was concerned there was a hacker and he referred to her in a derogatory term as well. So yep. it's. Yep. It was to be, yeah. yeah, it was totally unacceptable. Is there a particular policy um, with Zoom or whoever handles? Peter would be a re resource on this. And it has this happened to other commission or public meetings? And, and how are they handled? And what exactly is the protocol that we should follow? It hasn't happened to any other commission in a year and a half. Okay. It re not, to that, not to that degree. There's been some heated debates, uh, but nothing like that in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Is there a city policy? Not that I'm aware of. I was kind of using my best judgment for common decency. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. Is it something you want to tackle, Peter? It's I, kind of in your your vaults. Kind yeah, of I kind of play it by common decency. I kind of use a, a, a basic FCC guideline. When he started swearing, that was it. Yes. And then he, and then conveniently, immediately thereafter, he went he went over the line. So. No, but what I'm asking is, are there other municipalities that you could seek guidance from and suggest to the legal department that we come up with some rules for Zoom meetings? It, well, it's only supposed to be a temporary thing. So I don't I haven't heard of any other cities or towns coming up with anything. Um, so we could ask around, but I don't think there's anything outstanding. I think it's just. You're using common decency rules. You wouldn't put up with that in in a in a in a boardroom either, or in council chambers. So, no, that you're right. That person would be expect he'd be expelled. Right, he'd correct. Be asked to leave the meeting. So we did it digitally. Yeah, I think it, it's it's more difficult to do it this way than it would be in person. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, thank you for your your help. That was appreciated. No problem. That's why we have an active moderator, and you guys don't have to worry about that. Yes. Well, oh, thank you. I, I tried, but it's, it's just... Right. Other communities yeah. have their chairman run the Zoom meeting, and we didn't believe in that in Westfield. You have to have kind of an impartial observer to kind of keep an eye on things when you guys are doing your business. I'm, I'm glad of that. Believe <laughs> me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Uh, um, Meredith lost to internet. She's she just texted me. She can't get it back, so or hasn't gotten it back yet. So. Okay. Well, we don't need her for item nine. Uh, no. Motion to adjourn. We have a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Tom. Yes. Carl. Yes. Jim. Yep. Alex. Yes. Cliff. Yes. Well, thank you Cliff very much. Moved again. What's that? He moved again, David. <laughs>